We are back with the second session of the Grand Campaign. This is the single player Grand Campaign that I started last Friday. I think it was last Friday. Yes, it was. Um, this is obviously going to go all the way through Stellaris. We'll do CK3. We'll go to EU4. We're going to go to Victoria 3, and I will wait until the converter is out. And then we're going to go to Hoi 4, and then we'll do Stellaris. I haven't done a single player full Grand Campaign in a little over a year now, so it is well past due. Because I really do enjoy doing these. They tend to be absolutely fantastic. Not to bang on some wood there just in case. But um, first session, we went for, I think, around four or five hours. Uh, we went through, I believe, two characters, I want to say. Let's see. Who was it? We played Jedi Galu. We played, I think, Andrea. That's not right. What's up, Tal? How are you doing? Who was our ancestor? We can go to our title history. Um... We played, okay, Galu, then we played Andrea, and before that we played Gunari? That's not right. Okay, so just three characters. We played Jedi Andrea, and then we played uh, Jedi Galu. So we are the second character so far. We are the Taurus family. We started on this little bit of territory right here in Sasari, which is actually, in the beginning, one of the much poorer areas of the island of Sardinia. Originally, I'd planned on playing Cagliari, because they're in the strong position. But I figured it was less interesting. It was, it was a little too generic, a little too easy. Uh, and, and what is a Paradox game without a good amount of just general suffering, you know, broadly speaking? So, we played a really diplomatic game. Our first leader, uh, Galu's father, he was a very accomplished diplomat. And as such, we befriended all the other Jedikes, which are the kings uh, of Sardinia. And we got ourselves in a really solid, very um, secure position. Uh, unfortunately, the Arabs in North Africa launched an invasion. And our neighbor, Ngalura, was conquered by the North Africans. So we had a Muslim uh, province. I had said that we wouldn't go to war at all with the first character. But in the end, we did go to war with Galaru. Actually, I think we went to war as uh, Galu, rather. Uh, and as such, now we have expanded our holdings to all of northern Sardinia. So we're getting into a much stronger position. What's up, Zodi? What's up, Jakey? No, this is single player, Zodi. This is not multiplayer. What's up, Jay? So we are in a very secure position right now. Jedi Galu is 51. He is definitely getting up there in age. He is impatient. He is callous. He is trusting. A fortune builder, avaricious, an eager reveler, an architect, a crusader, a poet, and a confider. So he has built up a lot of Logodoro. Sasari has become the most prosperous trading city uh, in all of Sardinia due to his administration. We also did participate in the Great Crusade for the Holy Land, which we lost. Uh, but we did become a crusader. Notably from that, if I recall, there was the high point, which of course was when um, we, we got the crusader trait. We had our army absolutely slaughtered in battle. We were taken prisoner by the heathens. And uh, then we were labeled a coward by the Pope and had our crusader title taken away. We escaped from prison, went back to the Holy Land and got it back. But we did lose the crusade. So, uh, Galu has had a very interesting life so far, to put, put it simply. What's up, mage? How are you doing? How did your date go? Did you ever have that date, mage? Went to the museum the other day and saw cylinder seals. Love them so much. What's a cylinder seal? I've never heard of them. Yeah, that, that Pope was an absolute dick. It's the same one as we have right now, Innocentius II. So, anyway, at the end of last session, we ended with the conquest of Galura. Doing so, we kicked out the Muslims from Sardinia as they did get that initial foothold. But with our allies, which included the other Jedi's of Sardinia, as well as some of our much larger allies that we've gotten through, our many children being betrothed, we are in very good shape. Our heir is Castoro Torres. He is intelligent. He is diligent. He is callous, and he is generous. He is a misguided warrior, though. So we have a, a pretty solid heir to take over when we're gone. Um, and then we have Sabrina, who uh, I'm going to rename, because as someone uh, commented on a VOD, the VOD that I put up of this, uh, it's actually a dude. I thought this was a woman, and it was a man. So, if anyone would have a good recommendation for a good name for our grandson, uh, I will go ahead and rename him. Because, again, I did name him thinking that he was a granddaughter and not a grandson. But, I mean, hey, he, he, he can identify as whatever. But I think I fucked up. So, if you have a good name for him, uh, I will rename him. Jake? Hmm. They're like normal seals, but instead of stamping them, you roll them. Really? That's interesting. I think I, I think I used some of those when I used to play with Play-Doh, I'm pretty sure. But that's cool. Surgery, that's not a bad one. We'll keep it open. Uh, beyond that, we're in pretty good shape. Like I said, with this grand campaign, I want to take things very slowly. 
Uh, we are going to expand. I am going to prioritize events and stuff like that. I am running around 50 mods or so. So there's a lot of events mod. There's a lot of other mods that add all sorts of features. So we should be able to have a pretty interesting game without just like map painting the whole time. So be warned. Beyond that, let's keep things going. All right, I think Saturday is probably winning. That's a, that's a pretty good name. We do have uh, a, a, quite a lot of gold as well after the conquest of Galora. Uh, we're going to go ahead, I think, and expand. Oh, okay. Samurai is going to just go ahead and take it then. We'll, we'll upgrade the trade port there. What are we doing, Samurai? What are we doing? He uh, he did he did he did some forty chests there and went ahead and did name child. So let's see. They told me she sees me as a friend. We didn't end up meeting as I told her I'm not interested in that way. That's fair. You saw things differently. You communicated about it, so that's good. That's a much better uh, outcome than just like both ghosting each other. You know, that's always a uh, a little a little less nice. I've been corresponding with your chancellor, and I must say, I have come to see you in a new light. Ah, oh, the Kaiser is, uh, likes us a bit more now. We like him a lot. He, he doesn't like us too much. Mainly because of cultural differences. He is, my god, 34 diplomacy. And it, <laughs> what the hell is this emperor? He is an adulterer, he's a deviant, he's improvident, he's flagellant. He's a patriarch, a diplomat, and a charismatic negotiator with 34 diplomacy. Holy crap. Sounds like a very interesting guy. We can send him a poem. Maybe we'll do that later. Uh, Samurai, you can't just burn the points and then not say anything. What the fuck did he do? He's got minus 3,700 gold. How do you get that much negative gold? That's honestly impressive. I have, I have n never seen anything close to that. That's ridiculous. I'm going to turn on the AC one second. Jesus Christ. The only thing I can think of is with the Royal Court DLC, you can ask your liege to build a city. So the only thing I would guess this might be is a bunch of his vassals of High Diplo showed up in court and all asked him to build holdings in their demands. Alessandro, alrighty. Alessandro it is. Our grandson is going to be renamed Alessandro. Perfect. His life would make a fire TV show. Yes, it would. Absolutely. I hate ghosting because I don't know exactly if I'm ghosted or not. I mean, it becomes pretty clear if after like three weeks they haven't contacted you, but yeah. It's always nicer to communicate with someone that you're not interested, I find. You get more of a sense of closure. Saying, As someone who has both ghosted people and been ghosted by people, it sucks on both, on both ways. Because if you ghost someone, you end up feeling bad about it, or at least I do. Which is why I try not to do it anymore. And if you're ghosted, it just fucking sucks. So it's better just to communicate, you know? Which is easier said than done. One of our CK3 games, I had minus 1,500 piety and minus 7 of it. That's that's fair. Getting negative prestige and piety is very easy. Getting negative 3,700 gold is impressive, to be honest. 6 was afraid of 7 because 7, 8, 9. But why does 10 have PTSD? This is the Italian form of the name Alexander, a name that the Greek in origin means defending man. That's what Alessandra means. Ah, ah thank you, Samurai. That's interesting. Balanced humors. Forgot about that. Didn't we have two wives? Yeah, we had a wife before, but she died. Alrighty. Currently, Jedi Galu is overseeing his new domains. This is the largest his family has ever been. It's the most lands that they've ever held. We do share a common ancestry with many of the other royal families in uh, Sardinia, including the Cagliari Laurel family. We are of a similar vein. If we go in here and uh, look at the houses, we'll see that we are related to pretty much all the other Sardinian houses. At this point... Oh, we just had, uh... Oh my god, my son just had twins. Anyway, uh... 
we, we're larger than we've ever been. Uh, the only ones ever have been this size or beyond since obviously we lost contact with Byzantium after the Muslims took Sicily was Cagliari at one point, including at the start of this game, they did own Tortoli, but they do not anymore. So we are the largest in Sardinia now. We're not the strongest. I mean, we've got, we've got 800 troops. That's a good amount. Cagliari has, I believe, yeah, 1,900. So they have a lot more than we do, unfortunately. Is that because they upgraded their keep? Why is that? No. No, I'm not sure why they had that many, actually. It's a lot. Because he was struck in the middle of 9-11. And having uh, his other name what has Taurus in English means towers. Yes, absolutely. My god, this party is boring! Orgador has got to be the worst host the world has ever seen. How can mortal men be expected to endure this snoring celebration of mediocrity? Jesus, it's a little brutal. He is Polish. His eyes cast her about the room looking for a diversion, any diversion. Zagata gives me a friendly wave from behind, from a nearby balcony. I've got to do something to stop this evening dragging. We're going we're gonna to go dance a bunch. We'll, we'll go do that. We also need a new marshal. We're going to do Danilu because he is one of our knights and he has 20 marshal. So he'll be fantastic. We're going to send him to Galora to get some level of order over that recently twice conquered area. It was sacked by the Muslims, and then obviously, I'm sure a lot of it was damaged when we brought our armies over there to push them back out again. What's up, Finster? How you doing? What's up, Limpari? How about we do some incest strap and try to make a dwarf? Nah, I'm good, dog. I'm good. A beautiful morning rising over Logodora convinces me to go riding for the day, just for the sheer pleasure of it. I should invite a companion to enjoy this outing with me. We invite our daughter... Or we can invite our bishop. Our daughter already really likes us. Our bishop could like us more. And seeing as he's much more important than our daughter, um, we're going to invite him. After an hour of an easy trot, I decide to add a little excitement to our outing by racing a short distance. We'll race fairly because we're not an asshole. Neven! See that lone dead tree a half a mile or so straight ahead? Shading his eyes, he nods. On my mark, know that the last one there is a darn loser. I feel like darn probably wasn't a word used in 1124, but I could be wrong. Ready, set, go. I take an early lead, but Neven keeps pace right behind me. As we near our target, his horse finds his strength for one last burst of speed and noses ahead to reach the tree first. I'm heartened by his whoops of exuberant delight. Very well done, I concede. We'll trade mounts next time to see if it's your skill, shining, or the horses. Cool. All right, we're befriending our bishop. That's a good thing. We need the clergy to like us, especially given the religious... Uh, state of things after the schism in Europe. Ham is a midget, yes. I, I am absolutely tiny. You can't tell with this camera, but I'm actually four foot five, and that's true. Got me incest, Phil, watching House of the Dragon. Yeah, if you want to see some incest, literally just watch House of the Dragon. Like, Jesus Christ, that last episode. My cousin married my brother. Very nice. Let's go ahead and go on a hunt. Been a while. We could we could use uh, we could use some time off to, to relax. We've had wars. We've had uh, numerous difficulties with our children. It's it's time we get out in the countryside of Sardinia, which is beautiful actually. The Sardinian countryside is absolutely incredible. Bounding through the hills, I am gaining on the floody heart I have been chasing for hours. Just as I prepare to strike, I hear my chancellor Curadora, a word I can't say, cry out in pain. She has fallen, is now clutching her leg. God damn it. She's our vassal. She was with a group of, like, uh, Polish immigrant... Uh, man, the background on this is weird. When Galura was conquered by the Muslims, they brought slave trading to Sardinia. They were trading in slaves in Galura during, like, the couple years that they held it when we didn't attack them. And uh, they enslaved a bunch of Poles, or they got a hold of some. And then a bunch of them made it to our territory and asked for basically, like, some land. And we gave it to them. So she was originally, I think, Orthodox. We asked her to convert in exchange for giving her land. So that's who this is. And we're going to help her out, because she owns Porto Taurus, which is one of the, the wealthiest parts of our vassal holdings here in Sardinia. So we'll do that. Wonderful. Imagine not being six foot at 14. That's kind of cringe. For some reason, all my favorite characters turn out to be into incest. First Jamie, now Damon. Uh, uh, that's kind of the running theme of Game of Thrones, though, isn't it? What's up, Killer Bunny? Is that Caden? I assume that's Caden, I think, right? What's up, Bitter? How are we doing, man? Just gonna leave uh, this open while in class. What what class are you in right now, Bitter? Gotta got a hold of some pulse. There's a name I haven't seen in a while, Mr. Bitter Guitar. Yeah, 
Yeah, better. Good to see you, man. So Hamu is pro-Russian. God, I hope not. God, I hope not. That would mean I've had a lobotomy recently, and I don't remember it, which is problematic. That's that. That would be quite worrying, to be honest. I'd be very concerned. Just generally, are we religious? Not really. Uh, we could go on a crusade, but given that we are impatient, we. I know. I don't think we probably want to do that. We would hold a feast, though, so we'll hold a feast. We're still a duke, so these are really cheap. Actually, are we even a duke? Duke. No, we're not even a duke. We're, we're, we're the equivalent of a count right now. The Judaic title was recognized historically as a king title. So basically, the Jedi's of Sardinia were seen as kings, but they were really s small and weak. Effectively, in reality, we're a count, but our title being a Jedi technically gives us like a king title. So I guess the game's just not properly reflecting it, which isn't surprising. Yeah, petty kingdoms, exactly. Networking and communications. So learning how uh, you are streaming to us. Well, that's 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 a good thing to learn, Peter. Glad to hear that, man. How many how many years uh, left of college do you have, Peter? I'm st I still am suggesting you should make your air send your air to the Russians. Being uh, Judy gives you the lightsaber, right? Yes, it does. We are gonna get one, but it'll be a little while. All right, we're we're gonna drink more. We're gonna drink a lot more. We're 53, goddammit. We've fought a crusade. We've been taken prisoner by Muslim heathens. We pushed the heathens out of Sardinia. We we can des we deserve to get ridiculously drunk on feast nights. I mean, come on. And yeah, we deserve it. We gotta treat ourselves a little bit here, you know? Goddamn. As one plate of food is replaced by the next, my vassal, Castordo or Zokar, I'm saying that wrong, goes on and on about investment opportunities. He's that dude you meet at a party who won't shut the fuck up about Bitcoin. That's who this guy is. And that we, uh, how we have salvaged this mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you, my lord? You making a fool of yourself could never bore me. We're gonna really piss him off, but we're impatient and callous, so we're gonna be an asshole. We don't mean badly, we're just a dick, you know? It's just what we are. Whatever this music is, I've heard it from Medieval 2 Total War. Yes, that is exactly where it's from. It's a great soundtrack. I don't get copyrighted strikes for, and it fits Crusader King, so it's my preferred music when streaming this game now. I've been trying to set up on Arma 3 server, and I've been slowly going insane. I can understand why. Our Arma players are pretty wild, man. I used to play a lot of Arma. I played a lot of, like, DayZ Arma, and Jesus Christ. I understand your stress. We're gonna repair the rock that we got somewhere we got it in canterbury apparently our daughter can marry all right we need to find her someone prestigious to bring the family honor probably yeah, i guess we could do a count um someone young she's our daughter we do love her we don't want to marry her to like a 60 year old you know maybe one of the other jedikes of uh Kegliari, or sardinia rather he is only six. He is going to come of age soon. He's got a permanent scowl, but he's diligent. So we're going to arrange the marriage of Constanza to Sebastianu. He's not going to accept it. Too many existing alliances. Hmm. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, what about maybe into the Tuscany royal family? Already married. What about the Pisan royal family? She's pretty old. He... It's a republic, so he won't inherit, I don't think. What about Apula? Not a lot of good options here. Oh, 16-year-old king of Croatia. Let's see if... Let's see if he might like my daughter. He is very... Very much not interested. Marrying down! Well, that's just rude. We are technically a petty king, like... Like, this, I think Zodi said, so... That's insulting. All right. Um, not all the good options here, to be honest. Could marry her to a mayor, but that's really marrying down. Um, wow. There's no. There's no good options here. I guess in Kana? Uh, 
All right, see you in a bit, guitar. Good luck with class. Used to be a helicopter pilot in a Muslim unit. If I hear a missile lock sound in a movie, I immediately feel a wave of stress. Jesus. You are a finster? I love playing in small Italian republics. It's a lot of fun, especially with the rest public mod. All right, we're married her to the mayor of uh, this town. Well, we just need to find her a husband. We, we don't want her, you know, hanging out here with all of our other kids. We already have so many. Not only do we have to run Sasari, we also have to administer Galura now, and we've got eight children on top of that. So we need to get we need to get some of them out of our court just for our own peace of mind, you know. We've been invited to a wedding. We'll go to that. Wonderful, wonderful, good, good. We're gonna leave as soon as we can. Actually, no, we won't. We're an eager reveler, so we actually love parties. So we will we'll stick around. We are only a tier one reveler, but still. So at this point, I'd say that Jedi Galu is not obviously interested in expanding at all. He's not an ambitious person. He's not a warlike person. He's an administrator and a diplomat, really. He's very learned, too. So given that we now have two holdings in Sardinia and are in a pretty dominant position, he would be looking for the rest of his life really just to, to you know, centralize his control of northern Sardinia and make sure it's properly stabilized for when his son Castoro takes power, who, again, is actually very competent. I mean, he's diligent, he's callous, he's generous, and he's intelligent. So... In terms of Christianity and our own culture, he'd be, we we would really be, you know, very happy with him. Make children of the marriage be of your house. We could have done a matrilineal marriage. That's true. I didn't think about that actually. That would have been a very good idea. I was thinking about this, and my dream mod is the wackiness of Kaiser Redux with the role playability of Millennium Dawn, and it's stable for multiplayer. Have have that's, although that sounds fantastic, it will never exist, tall. I'm sad to say it, man. As lovely as that is, it will never exist. I should have done a matrilineal marriage. You were right, but I didn't. We played a lot of Antistasi, and I ended up using a stolen transport little bird from the Americans to fly back and forth. But as it turns out, the Americans don't like it when you steal their stuff. Yeah, that's true. Unless you're uh, the Taliban after they pulled out of Afghanistan. Uh, and it genuinely feels like the AA was gunning for me personally. Hmm. Yeah, Vicky 3's roleplay is going to be so good. So close. We're not stressed. We don't need to go talk to anyone. We could use some more knights, and we have the prestige for it. That's terrifying. A quiet campfire burns besides me as I sit down. It is my only companion here. I've been traveling for eons, alone in this strange dream of mine. Where am I going, and where have I gone? I know not. It is now night, and around me is desert sand, yet I feel neither cold nor hot. The skies above fade in and out of different unnatural colors, such as dark emerald, moon, or the blue of the ocean depths. I lie back and watch the flickering stars. How beautiful this world is. What is going on? Are we having, a, like, a lucid dream or something? I wake up with a jolt. The stars, the night, the desert, the colors under the skies. They are not here. There is only the sunlight morning as I wake up. Am I back in reality, or am I still in the dream? Uh oh. I do not know how to distinguish between the two. Uh oh. <laughs> that's a problem. It's important to be able to differentiate dreams from reality. That's that's pretty key for just general sanity, you know. We're gonna build some farms and fields in Galura. We gotta bring back the prosperity that one existed there before the heathens invaded. New SCP discovered apparently. It's an SCP fenster. I have no idea. A lot of alliances. I really am looking forward to when they add societies. That'll be so interesting. I played a lot of CK2. A lot of CK2. Especially modded, but just generally. And it was the societies that always was so fun. Because, like, there's a lot of do things to do in CK3. There's character dynamics, there's expansion, there's administration. There's all that kind of stuff, right? But there's once in a while you get time when there's nothing really going on. And that's when societies are so fun. Because they make things so interesting. I hope that's the next major DLC they add. Friends and Foes has been really good, though. I don't have it on for this. I needed to revert to 1.6 so that I could play with the mods that I wanted for this grand campaign. But the Friends and Foes uh, DLC, it's really small, but I really like what it added. I don't know if any of y'all have played it. But Friends and Foes is really cool because it actually does double down really heavily 
upon like the like the good friends and rivals dynamics like i was doing a playthrough of it by myself like this last week uh and, and what i noticed is like the rival system that they've now put into it is just so good having intergeneration rivalries between families adds a lot to the game so friends and foes was surprisingly good even though it should have been free but still my wife maholta will mince her lack of female companionship I understand, of course, that it is the way of the world that the soldiers and officials should be men, but even the servants in my own quarters are generally male. Would you not thus agree that my household would benefit from a handful of noble ladies to attend and entertain me? I ponder her request. It would be a few more people to feed and lodge, but I suppose it would bring a little color to her life. Yeah, we can afford it. Why not? Our son. Which, is this our second or third son? gets our second so we will we will teach him personally let's uh see if we can give him intrigue education that's not optimal cool we can ask the pope for gold we're gonna go ahead and do that if we can get money back from the papacy we're gonna take it you know why we just had our men absolutely slaughtered in the holy land for one of the pope's crusades so we would see it as he he, he deserves to pay us much more than he has because when we landed in the Holy Lands, we tried to attach our troops with the Pope, with the Pope's army, and we got left behind and slaughtered by the Pope. So, we would, uh, we would have no problem taking all the gold that he is willing to give us. To be honest, we'll upgrade our barracks in our capital, and we'll upgrade the fields in Galore. Try to bring as much prosperity as possible. Did we end up winning the crusade? No, we did not. Absolutely not. We got pushed back into the ocean. It was, it was going really good in the beginning, but then uh, the Muslims just had too many soldiers. In that, in that crusade, we lost our whole army, and we were briefly imprisoned by, I think it was the Fatimids or Egypt. Uh, but we did escape from prison, and did manage to come back to the Holy Lands. But we, we lost. So It was a very unsuccessful first crusade. That's how it tends to be, though. I, I noticed in CK3 that like uh, the first couple crusades for the Christians never go very well, to be honest. Poland's going insane. Yeah, they're pretty they're pretty good size. France is just getting slowly devoured by the HRE in this game as well. Ah, oh, the Kaiser did die. That absolutely god tier Kaiser Henry. He had like 34 diplomacy. The new one is very young. He is paranoid, generous, and content. Not the best. I'm sure his vassals like that though. We've been invited to another wedding. So many goddamn weddings. We can all tell that Margarita had too much to drink. I've gotten this event so many times. As one plate of food is replaced by the next, my acquaintance, Alberto Abizzo, goes on and on about tax levels. And that was how we salvaged that mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you? Again, we're... No, we, we're really... We're a really affected steward ourselves. And we focus a lot on administration, so we would actually probably be very interested in this conversation. So we'll keep it going. Margarita <laughs> had too many margaritas. I do think that was probably a big part of it. My mind went to pizzas, personally, but that's because I'm really hungry right now. We feasted and danced late into the night, but at last it is time to head back home. I cannot help but notice that Uga and Margarita could hardly uh, stand next to each other. They're the people getting married, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That's about right. Med medieval marriages were not were not happy marriages, if we're being honest. Uh oh. And Andreas, I don't think that's how you say that. Andres's sneezing was loud enough to attract the attention of everyone nearby, including myself. Some chuckles and others shake their heads in disapproval as reaction to this. I usually sneeze in threes, he explained sheepishly. Apologies about that. Yeah, you, you get a... They give you a trait for this. Infamous loud sneezer. I don't, I don't think loud sneezing is quite that bad, but it is it is pretty fucking annoying. Aberting is the ruling house of Belong, I, I believe. Let me look. Yep. Albertingi. Yes, they all are. 
They have such a cool flag. The Lombardy one is so cool. I remember playing Medieval Total War 2 and absolutely loving the, the Milanese, like, symbol. It's so cool. What do we want to do? When the raised voices reach me yet again, I quench my instinct to turn on my heel. The constant bickering of my vassals, Curadora or Kazar, and Curadora name I can't say, is it enough to drive any man mad. Something must be done. I could either treat the situation as an exercise in mediation, or eavesdrop and approach one of them with my sympathies afterwards. We're, we're gonna try and get them to, to, to relax a bit. And we succeeded. Good. Good, good. So we have Avaricious Architect, and we're about to get Administrator. We're going to get all three of the Stewardship uh, perks, which is really nice. Jedi Galu was meant to be a very good Administrator, and he, ha he has turned into one, which is fantastic. Good, we brought order to Galora again. Our Marshal was sent to Galora to, to rein in the, the bandits and the, the general unrest there after the Muslims. I'm sure there was some remnants of their army still in the mountains too, which he's successfully dealt with. So now we're going to get our marshal to just work on organizing our army in case we need to defend from another heathen invasion. It's always possible. It's our development like 21. That's not bad. That snake is historically incorrect. It came from a family that ended up ruling Milan a bit down the road from this time period. Ah, I got you, Zodi. Still looks pretty cool though. It does look very cool. Nice. And then we're going to go ahead and upgrade the forts in Sasari. During this time period, uh, the coastal cities were always at risk of basically being raided. The North African Muslims were constantly raiding coastlines in, in Spain and Italy, but especially in the islands. So Majorca, Corsica, and Sardinia were constantly being raided. So it's important that we upgrade our defensive holdings on the coastlines. And Sasari is uh, a coastal city. Who is your heir? Our heir is Castora de Torres. He is intelligent. He is a misguided warrior, generous, callous, and diligent. Pretty solid. Not the most competent person, but, you know, very, very smart, and he means well. So, he's been wearing his armor for quite some time now. I'm, I'm really not sure why. I guess, I guess he just likes it. All our kids are married. Galu is not betrothed. He is club-footed. I did not realize that. That's unfortunate. We've got our income up pretty high, too. We're up to 8.1. Once we fully uh, build up our holdings in the north, we're going to look to probably getting some more men-at-arms. Do we get any unique ones? We do not. That's unfortunate. We don't get any specifically uh, unique unit types here. We can change that, though. If we want to, uh, If we want to reform our culture to give us certain specific unit types, we can. Uh, right now, the Sardinian culture is very simple. We just get Stalwart Defenders, which gives us defensive bonuses, and then we get Isolationist, which reduces our diplomatic range. When I was in the castle town of Galu, his attention was caught by the criminal chain in the pillory. Galu lifted his head and was made a show of ignoring the criminals begging for water. Arrogant, or we can change him to... We'll let him become arrogant. We're not too worried. He's not our primary son, so... Uh, not a big deal. Go ahead and call for some more knights as well. We are looking very thin in that regard. And then we're going to go on a hunt while we while we wait to come back and uh, overlook and see if we want to hire any of the new knights. Poachers here in Judex Woods. They huddled together as I ride up with my guards, making a poor job of hiding the dead heart behind them. We did not do this. Your mercy. Their blades and bows belie their words. We are impatient, callous, and trusting. We trust them. We're trusting. So, uh... We'll believe them, and we'll, we'll see if they want to become uh, bowmen. We'll, make, we'll uh, make our son Castora become a steward. He's fairly competent at it, and he needs experience, so... We're going to give him some time uh, developing the capital of Sasari. It'd be good to get him some proper training, actually uh, administering things. Oh, he's bisexual. Interesting. We'll go 
and recruit some more of these knights when we had the money for it. Two came to our court when we uh, put out, I guess, a, a general rumor that we were looking for more knights. My spy master has come to me with grave news. While we did not know who yet, someone is plotting to kill him. They don't know who they're dealing with, my lord. They think that they can kill me. I will show them. Oh, yes, they will. Sounds like famous last words, to be honest. Probably because he's incestuous and a fornicator. That, that might have something to do with his problem. But he's very competent, so we want to keep him around. What's up, skater? Opinion on the Israeli-Palestine conflict in the Middle East. Oh, Jesus. Um. <laughs> Pass! Pass! I'll, I like to talk about political issues, but that one always just ends with angry people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that one like a fucking coward. Any other CK3 games coming up soon? Samurai, there's one starting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will uh, early, starting at I think 10 a.m. Oh fuck, I have to get up early tomorrow, don't I? Um, there's gonna be a CK3 game. We're starting the Nile game tomorrow. So that'll be a game starting in 1066, set along the Nile. With, like, the Orthodox kings in the Southern Nile region, the Jews in uh, Aksum, and then the Muslims in Egypt. So, there's going to be a Nile game starting tomorrow. Uh, and then there's a game starting next Tuesday, I think, which is going to be the England game that we're starting. So, yes, there's a couple more CK3 games coming up pretty soon. Do you have a list of mods you're using in Discord? I have a list of mods I'm using for this game. I did put together that mod list. Uh, for, for most of our multiplayer games, we are not using mods right now. But I did remember to put together a mod list for this game. Let me go find it. I did do that last week. Here we go. Here are all the mods that I'm using in this game right now. If you mean for multiplayer, we don't use them, uh, typically. playing for a hundred years now so I think I am gonna start to move a little bit more ambitiously assuming that we get characters that are willing to do it our son is not ambitious but he is diligent and callous so he might expand depends on how relations go with the energetics of uh, Sardinia it would be nice to become a king so we can start to hold court because you can do a lot more interesting stuff once we get that I mean for this game yep that's the one Zodi my lord the wine all right we've gotten this event many times when I get repeat events, for the most part, I'm just going to skip them. Because they tend to be the same thing over and over again, unfortunately. It would be nice to start to get more alliance with the other Italian leaders. Galu is going to be trusting. Yep. Yeah. We're trusting as well, so we would see fit to make sure that he gets that. Tyrant Antiquarian. None of them are very good at it, though. I guess we'll hire him. It would be nice to commission some artifacts when we have the gold for it, because currently I don't think we have any items. We just... No, we have a few. We have a Scarab Brooch, a Basic Lantern, a Pot Shared, and a Romance about a Royal Family. That's interesting. Our Marshal has died. We'll go ahead and make our vassal. Oh, no. He's really incompetent, is he? We'll make our knight marshal. He's not fantastic, but he'll do. We also do have 1,100 soldiers now, so our armies have become much stronger since we conquered uh, Galura. And it appears that... <laughs> he did come out to us saying someone was planning on murdering. It appears that was true, because he just got murdered. No, he died of old age. Never mind. Probably. We'll never know for sure. We'll make our vassal our spy master. He's not incredibly competent, but he's good enough, and we secure some more of our major holdings. There's a prominent family from Pisa that attempted to conquer Sardinia around this time. Yes. So the Galura family that existed before the Muslims killed them at the start of this game, they were basically a vassal of Pisa. Uh, so Pisa was very heavily involved with the politics of Sardinia. They tried multiple times to get involved and get uh, take lands within Sardinia. 
Uh, the royal family of Galura at the start in 1066, they're basically an offshoot of one of the noble families from Pisa. However, they were kicked out of Sardinia in this timeline due to the fact that the Muslims conquered Galura. So, Pisa has currently no strings at all within Sardinia. Historically, they did, absolutely. In my EU4 game, the Netherlands went to Africa and now uh, is a fetus republic. That's pretty wild, mage. I assume you're playing single player. That's really weird. We'll commission an artifact. We don't have a crown. That's that's important for a, for a ruler to have, so we'll start by commissioning a crown. Also, our grandson can marry. Alessandro has come of age. He is a thrifty clerk, intelligent, temperate, zealous, and impatient. For some reason... He is wearing his helmet indoors. I'm, I'm not sure why. It's It seems to be a theme of our family, wearing armor when, when they really don't need to. I guess... I don't know. Um, let's find someone really royal. Oh, we could get him married to a princess of the Byzantine Empire. That would be pretty prestigious. Often we find a woman of good breeding here. What about her? What's her royal family? I'm not going to pick off of traits, though. We don't want to do that. The Salian... Right, we could have uh, betrothed to the Princess of the HRE. Or the Princess of Byzantium. We're going we're gonna to betroth our grandson to Princess Theodosia. Because getting ourselves... Sardinia was a vassal of Byzantium, or Rome, up until really right before the start of this game. It's been around 100 years since we were direct vassals of uh, Rome, but we obviously have a lot of cultural connections to them, so we are going to royal, uh, marry into their family if we're able to do that, which we are. So, we'll betroth them. That'll be fantastic. Very prestigious. Our grandson will be married to the daughter of the Emperor of Rome, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. Get it overnight. Yes, SP new to DLC. Ah, gotcha. Why is it the north, right? I haven't played it because it's all just mission trees, and I don't really want to buy it. I don't think it's worth it. He looks like he'd make a better ruler than your son. Yeah, that's that's not saying much, though. We love our son, but... Yeah, I know. He does look a little bit incompetent, doesn't he? Oh, shit. All right. We have died. We lost the title. Jedi Galu. A Logodoro has abandoned his mortal coil at 61 years of age. He died of old age. A zealous man, he fought for the glory of God against the heathens and won the greatest holy wars in recent history. It's true. Jedi Castora ascends the throne. A charming and outgoing man, he is celebrated by many nobles across the realm as a gracious host. It's not, it's not the best thing to be famous for. It's just being a good host. It's kind of... Alright, first things first. We're, we're going we're gonna to find some real clothing. Goddamn, bro. You don't, you don't have to wear your armor everywhere. Probably Western clothing. We're not super rich, so we'd go for, like, you know, something like this. And then we'll build, like, we'll, we'll wear a really simple crown. Because, again, Judex were kings. They were seen as kings. Something not too gaudy, though, because we can't afford it. We'll just wear a very simple one. And then let's let's find a beard that's just not absolutely disgusting. He is pretty old, so we could give him a bigger beard. We'll grow the hair out a little bit. And then we'll wear a cloak, because we have a fuckload of them on this DLC. We're z are we zealous? No, we're not zealous. We won't wear that. That'll work. What's some note? There are some changes. Government reforms changed a lot. Really? Okay, that is pretty cool. That is interesting. With well, estates or... Hmm. I'll have to take a look at that. This is the same single-player campaign. Yes, it is. No, it's the single-player grand campaign. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look at Jedi Castoro. He is, as I said before, diligent, callous, and generous. A misguided warrior, an eager reveler, a novice steward, a flexible leader, and intelligent. So he's very competent. We have our wife, who's Judesa Margot. She is glowing. 
Uh, well, a spy master, an intricate web weaver. She is chaste. That'd be a good thing for a Christian. Forgiving and callous. We have three children. We have Alessandro, our son, who's very competent. He's come of age. We've got our daughter, Ilaria, who is only nine. She, she doesn't have a guardian. We'll do it ourselves. And then we've got our youngest son, also named Galu, who is rowdy. And we will also take him under our wing. We received a martial education. We're not very good at it. Um, so I guess we will go down it. But we're, we're going we're gonna to become a... We'll do authority focus. So we're, we're going to be a very tough ruler. Focus more on that rather than strategy. What have I missed lore-wise? Oh, that's... That's a long story. We're gonna make Alessandro our son, our steward. Or I, again, I want him to, to be kinda become trained uh, and, and very confident. Oh, he took off his armor. We can actually see what he looks like. <laughs> this is what our son looks like when he's not constantly wearing his armor. Because um, we want him to get trained, obviously, in stewardship. Uh, for Chancellor, we'll make our vassal from Porta Torres. Our father gave her her land, so she should be grateful. She's not. She doesn't like us much. So we're going to work on befriending her. For our spy master, we will go with... Someone who doesn't hate us. We'll go with Euphemia. We'll, we'll make our sister spy master. She's not very good at it, but she's not going to murder us. So that's a plus. Let's go ahead and hire a physician. Let's actually go ahead and try and hire one the old-fashioned way. We don't have the money for more knights, so we'll need to find someone we can. We'll repair our lantern. And we can start training our children in combat, which we're going to do. One of the mods that I have allows you to actually teach your kids how to fight, so they can actually become a little bit more competent. Do you plan on creating a new Catholic base before you convert to EU4? That depends entirely on the roleplay. I have no idea. I don't like to when I do when I do grand campaigns. I don't like to pre-plan a lot of stuff, which may make it a little bit less interesting, I suppose. But I find that if you just go with the flow and the role play, absolutely batshit crazy stuff will happen. You just have to give it time. So we'll see. He has failed to learn anything in training. Maybe his sister will be more competent. She doesn't want to learn to fight. That's a shame. That's a real shame. We're going to go ahead and, and hire uh, Elitza. She is a renowned physician. Puts us into a bit of debt, but we can afford it. All right, I just realized that we lost Galura. Due to the fact that we didn't make a duchy title, we have lost Galura uh, to our half-brother, Galu. We don't dislike him, per se. We're not, we're not a tyrannical man, but we are diligent and uh, callous. And we have been trained as a warrior. So I would suspect that we'd probably want that land back. And we want our heir to keep it. So I think that, generally speaking, Jedi Castoro is going to be on the warpath. We're going to be trading up our army, which we lost a lot of soldiers after the split. And we're going to be preparing probably for some wars of conquest. So we can secure a duchy title and be able to hold on to our land. So when our son Alessandro inherits, he'll be able to uh, retain everything. Galu and I attended a small ceremony today for a local saint. And I'll admit the bishop, Saluri, certainly took their time going through the scriptures. Galu wasn't having any of it, however. He was clearly bored and was constantly looking around the church for distraction. Cynical, zealous, or ambitious. We're not irreligious, so we wouldn't want him to become cynical. We're not a zealot, so we wouldn't really care to make him religious. But we understand the importance of ceremony, so we are going to end up making him ambitious. I know my RPs would be boring to a lot of people. I play like 0 or 2 to 3 speed and don't map paint at all. 100% RP. Yeah. Like, I know this game is not going to appeal to a lot of people. Like, the game we're doing right now, uh, I'm doing right now, until EU4 and Victoria 3, I think most people probably won't find it very interesting. I'm not going to map paint, and I think to many people, that's probably not the most interesting, but I, I think it will make for a better story, and I like the slow buildup, so... We are going to rapidly expand at points. If I get Ambitious Leader, I am going to map paint a little bit. But after that, I'm going to try and actively make our family fall from grace. So we'll see. I mean, something huge happened today. For the first time, I made my mother proud. I vacuumed the house. Congratulations. You are now one step closer to becoming an adult. It's good to hear, man. What you're doing right now is 100% my cup of tea. That's fair. That's fair. But I also know that you're a hardcore role player, Zodi. So... 
My night Ulf approached me with a thoughtful expression. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? Hopefully, otherwise we're a fucking psychopath. He must read my irritation to such a personal question from my face because he continues. I mean, is there anyone you would wish to dedicate your commissioned artifact to? It is turning out well, but a meaningful inscription will make it feel even more personal. We really love our wife. Um, a lot. We also loved our father. But, given circumstances, we're gonna, we're gonna have it for our wife. Because we really love her. And, uh, happy wife, happy, happy marriage. Something like that. There's a phrase, I've forgotten it. Probably because I'm not married. Just, it's a good thing. Alright, come on, son, you got this. He failed to learn yet again. He's an ambitious lad, but he just can't seem to get better with his sword. I just like that you're back to single player. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. There are a few things I enjoy more than Judisa and Margot's company. Wonderful. An actual happy marriage in CK3, not with a relative. That's fantastic. It's good to see. She quietly listened to all my troubles, helping uh, me put them in perspective. And after a while, I realized that it wasn't as bad as I had imagined. After this short break, I felt more at ease than I had been in a long time. I'm lucky to have a friend like Judisa and Margot. That's our wife, by the way. Have we, have we, let's seduce our wife. She has a hundred opinion of us, but we have a 30% chance of seducing our wife. It's, I guess it's just one of those marriages where we have, like, just no physical attraction. But, you know, we respect each other and we have kids together, you know. Let's develop the capital. We could use a little bit of stress. It's, it's a good thing sometimes. My metalsmith Ulf updates me on his progress, droning on about the limits of mold and bellows as my mind reels with bold ideas from my crown. Making uh, may not be my personal forte, but that doesn't mean I can't have some say in how my money is spent. Micromanaging things you don't understand. Always a good idea. We'll give us some suggestions. And let's see if our son will actually learn. He has failed yet again to learn anything. Basically, we're just going into like the, 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 the courtyard of our castle. Uh, with some practice swords, or we're just beating the shit out of our son, because he's not getting better, so I assume he's just, like, getting his ass kicked, like, every week, and completely failing to learn how to use a sword. Kind of, probably pretty close to child abuse, but given that we're in, uh, 1134, that, that doesn't exist, so it's fine. Cultural differences and all that. How should I approach Janessa Marga? She seems like a reserved individual who preserves silence as a companion. At least that's how she appears on the surface. Who knows what sort of person she is in private? Is she meek and sub submissive? <laughs> or perhaps passionate and fiery? I'll find out once I have breached her stony exterior. For now, I have decided how to make myself remain in her thoughts after spending some time alone. Alright, be gallant and charming, uh, tenderly as a friend, or wait for the right opportunity. She's chaste, forgiving, and callous. How about as a friend? We're already friends with her, so. I'd like to get to know you better. Jonas and Margot appears tense at first, but relaxes over time as she starts to believe there's no ulterior motive behind my request. Wonderful. All right. We're, we're actually getting to know our wife. That's that's a good thing, I think, given that we've been married for oh, probably a good two decades at this point. It's never too late to uh, to get to know your wife, unless she served you divorce papers, I suppose. Sitting by Judisa Margot's side, talking about the rumors at court, seeing her smile modestly as our eyes meet, my heart starts to beat faster. Wonderful. We're falling in love with our wife. That's a good thing as well. That. We're about to come out of debt as well. We get that huge debuff due to being generous. Alright, our crown is finished. It is very mediocre. Over here, my lord. My knight Ulf weighs me over with a wide grin. I have toiled many days and nights, and finally my work is done. He presents me with an object wrapped in cloth, and as I lift the fabric, my eyes grow wide. An ornate crown of fine craftsmanship. The crown is forged from silver and set with small pieces of jet. What is that? A eunuch. Oh, okay. So we got a crown. It's the Torshitoriu crown. It gives us a bit of prestige, but it actually gives us more vassal in it, which, you know, it's, it's not bad. It's not great. Not bad. It's a very modest crown. One befitting of our title. We're not even a duke. We're not a king. We may claim to be being a Jedi, but we aren't in reality. So, 
The celebrations have come to an end, and the evening entertainment seems to be over when Judas and Margot suggested a reading. My clerk soon arrives, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my chance to impress my wife. Alright, she's chaste, forgiving, callous, uh, and a spy master. She's not religious, so we're gonna scratch that. She's callous, forgiving, and chaste, so she probably wouldn't like entertainment. We'll, we'll, we'll do learning. Maybe that'll work. She, she didn't, she didn't want to learn. <laughs> she did not like that. Fuck. We should have done entertainment. This is just like my real life experiences on Tinder. Absolutely failing to understand the individual and talking about things that they're not interested in. It's, it's a great way to do things. What's up, Flop? Good afternoon. Work is done for the day. Time to relax. Hell yeah, man. Good, good. Take a, take a seat. Chill the fuck out. He's still not learning! What is wrong with our son? He's ambitious. He should be improving. What the hell? Some kids, I swear. Such a disappointment. We're going to tell him that. That won't cause any problems. We're going to go on a hunt. We're really angry and stressed that our son is so incompetent. So we're going we're gonna to go hunting and kill some things, you know, to deal with our problems. It's, a health, it's basically a medieval therapy. You would think it is a creature from myth. Perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest deer I had ever seen. Even when the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight lying dead before me. Euphemia is just as awestruck. I have never seen such a thing, my lord. That's our sister, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna mount the, the trophy in our great hall. Yeah. Wonderful. Alright, let's beat the shit out of our son again. Come on! He still isn't learning. And our daughter refuses to even try. Ah, the disappointment of children. We just failed to seduce our wife. You are a thoughtful man, Gastoro, but I do not like you that way, says our wife, and looking disappointed. Only God knows what the future might hold for us. Maybe we can romance our wife. No, we failed to, we failed, so we can't we can't do that. That's unfortunate. Fun fact, hog sizes have been shrinking every decade that passes, so that means that your character has a huge hog, most likely. And was small then is a big now. Really? I didn't we like literally make most types of animals that we eat much like larger than they were previously due to like breeding and genetic engineering? Because I know chickens have gotten way fucking bigger in like the last hundred years. <sighs> Alright, we're pretty on you know what? We're gonna we're gonna we can't afford it. We can't afford it, but we're gonna go on a pilgrimage. Jedi Castor is pretty unhappy right now. He's been married to his lovely wife for 20 years. And when he tried to get to know her more intimately and actually uh, seduce her, he, he failed miserably. It's probably due to the fact that uh, he, he, he tried to take her on a learning date when she wasn't interested in and, and just kind of failed. So he's pretty unhappy right now and frankly probably wants to get out of the capital. Uh, so we're going to go on a pilgrimage that we can't afford. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go to the... Let's go really far away. We're going to... I guess we can go to the Vatican. We can only really afford the Vatican. We're going to go talk with the Pope about our problems. We're going we're gonna to get out of town for a little bit. While our, while our wife uh, hates us. So It's probably due to the fact that he's not her, uh, not her cousin. Yeah, that would that would hurt things a bit. Hog is a cinnamon for a dick. I, I'm aware of what it is. I tried to make a good assumption that you weren't talking about that. But that's unfortunate. Thou hath no maidens. That is true. For every week that passes, my fellowship grows even smaller. We literally just have to take a boat across the Mediterranean. What the fuck are my companions doing? Just jumping out of our ship? Some have gone as far as they can before the need to return home overtakes them. Others have met with less fortunate ends. Most worrying is the fact that my group of personal guards is sitting out at an alarming rate. The fact alone shows what a treacherous journey this can be. Let's, let's take a look at the path that we need to travel to get to the Vatican. We, we get on a ship here in Sasari. We, we literally just sail right across uh, the Mediterranean, and then we're, we're, in, we're in the Vatican. So, again, what the fuck are our companions doing? We don't need any protection. We're literally just in Italy. It's fine. <coughs> it's amazing what hundreds of years of selective breeding can do for chickens. They now have more meat. Plus, it helps that you, they have zero predators in the farms. Yes, exactly. Plus, genetic engineering and, you know, special types of grain, all that kind of stuff. But this also does kind of suck, because nowadays chickens are just raised for us to eat, which is kind of sad and horrid. True. 
it's really it's a good idea not to think about where your meat comes from Gen generally speaking just the less you think about it the more you can like enjoy it like every time i think about where like the beef or the chicken i eat comes from it gets really depressing and i get not hungry but meat is really good so it's better just to block it out of your mind and and uh, allow the perpetual state of pain and, and uh, malevolence to continue you know Ship travel was quite dangerous, though. It was, mage. I get that. But this is, like, maybe a day or two ship shipping. Shipping? Ship travel? By boat? I don't know what to call it. But I don't know. It's it's not that far away. Pilgrims flock to Rome from all over the Christian world. Some follow via friend Sigina. Others take less known paths. In the end, we all converge here at St. Peter's Basilica, where the great man himself was put to rest. Standing here with the other pilgrims, I sense a feeling of solemn unity and fellowship shared amongst the gathered, all having overcome various trials and tribulations along their journey. I will say, I've been to the Vatican, and uh, it was much better than I expected. Like, I knew that they had a lot of wealth and had done a lot of beautiful things, but I remember going into the Vatican and being like, Jesus fucking Christ, that's actually impressive. Like, the Vatican is absolutely beautiful. I'm not religious at all, but my god, it is pretty impressive. I will say that. It's, it's pretty fucking impressive. I guess that's what 1,500 years of taxing all of Europe has done, but, you know, it's impressive. I don't think about BSC under any conditions. You'll be paranoid of B for life. Oh, I know. Don't don't think about how it's made. They may have fucked up, but I think I have most ability to, to feel extreme sadness because I haven't spoken about this, but my dad died like two months ago and I barely cried. Jesus, no. You didn't tell me your dad died, dude. Dog. I'm fucking sorry to hear that, man. You blocked it out is what you've probably done, man. Fuck, dude. I didn't know that. I'm really sorry to hear that note. You know, you could you could have sent me a message or something. I mean, when a family member dies, I get not wanting to talk about it, dude. But I did not know that, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Losing, losing parents at a young age is not easy. I lost my mother when I was 13, man. The best advice I can give you is don't just lock all that shit away. Like, what I did when my mother died when I was young is I locked it all away, and uh, I've been dealing with the consequences of that for the last decade. So don't do that. That's the best bit of advice I can give you. He wasn't a part of your life. That's fair, man, but he's still your parent, and that means a lot, you know, even if you have a bad relationship with him. Even if you hate his guts for good reasons, he's still your parent, you know, so. Sorry to hear that, man. That's really shitty. Shit sucks. It's the biggest fear of mine. Losing a parent mage or... One of these days I will go to Spain to see the Basilica, Basilica Sagrada under construction in Barcelona. Oh, you mean the thing that has, yeah, it hasn't been uh, completed in like 140 years. I walked past it. I never I never really looked too closely at it, which I should have because it's really beautiful. But that's definitely a cool thing to see. Losing parents at any age is tough, I imagine. It is. It definitely is. You've coped. Yeah, that's good. Coping's important, but make sure you find the right way to do it and honestly if you don't have a therapist man i'd recommend looking into it just saying when you lose a parent you need to talk to someone about that shit otherwise it'll just build up in your brain i used to even cry about just imagining losing my parents that's yeah, fair it it's pretty shitty i think most of us fear it but because we know it will happen at some point it's just a question of when all right, we finished our pilgrimage to the Vatican. Uh, we've now come back to Cesare to uh, see our wife, who again doesn't doesn't love us. She's made she's made that very clear. She she doesn't care for us much. She likes us a lot. We got friend zoned by our wife. I, I just want to underline that fact in case that like y'all haven't connected those dots. We we did get friend zoned by our wife, which is even more awkward because she really likes us. Like our wife really likes us. She, she likes us a lot as a friend. Or we have sex once a year to have children, but beyond that, it's just basically a friendship with marriage vows, so. Poor Jedi Castoro. He's got a lot of, I think, probably internalized rage at this point and a lot of insecurity. So we're gonna we're gonna deal with that in a really healthy way by invading our neighbors and uh, generally doing violent things. That's the best way to cope with your problems. Just a little bit of advice there. So, yeah. Friends with benefits. Not really. I would imagine it's just awkward missionary sex once a year to have children. So, probably not even that. Aha! Galu has improved his skill at arms and showed how hard he's willing to work towards his goals. Finally! Finally! Our fucking son 
finally improved. And he got diligent. Oh my god. He's now ambitious, diligent, rowdy, and potentially intelligent. God damn. He's, he's kind of impressive. We've got some pretty competent children. What a fucking messy marriage. Oh, it's it's absolutely batshit crazy. When I was in Barcelona, I went inside the Basilica Sagrada Familia, and it was incredible. Hell yeah, Sand. Yeah, I wish I'd gone in. I didn't. It, it looks incredible. By the way, he means whores and cocaine. Have at it. Listen, my husband. I will give you children, but outside of that, we're only friends. That's exactly what it is, Jarl. It's brutal. What's up, man? The best kind of marriage. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I think I'd prefer a marriage where my wife actually enjoy, enjoys fucking me. Call me crazy. I, I think I'd prefer that. Just, uh, just generally speaking, it'd be a little preferable to just, uh, hey, so, uh, is it that time of year again? Fuck. All right, we need some more kids. You know, it's a little, a little awkward. It's a little bit awkward. Ah! Oh, no. I don't I thought he improved. He didn't. Nope. And he got wounded. We just, we just wounded our son trying to teach him how to, how to fight with swords. That's unfortunate. I was a bit overzealous and injured my ward. That's our son. Why would we call him our ward? He's our fucking child. <laughs> we just like, we're, we're sparring with our son and we just seriously injure him. And, uh, and out loud he just says, ah, I've injured my ward. That's like a traumatic moment in the life of our son. God damn. His father referring to him as his ward. It's a, it's a little brutal, not gonna lie. This is a really dysfunctional family. Jesus, man. This is, like, impressively dysfunctional, frankly. It's about right. Get a CK3. This is the true happy wife, happy life feeling. Yes, yes it is. To be fair, our wife is chaste, though. So I guess she just... I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just all bad. Though I will surely see many battlefields before I meet my maker. Maybe. My library holds tales of war from 100, 100 lifetimes. I recently acquired a tome on the great siege of Constantinople, as well as a time-worn scroll written in some ancient language. Who knows what forgotten secrets it holds? Well, we, we can translate it. Why not? We'll try and translate it. He hasn't earned the title of son yet. Whew! Oh boy. Night falls and a single candle illuminating the script before me becomes shorter by the hour. When it flickers one past time and leaves me in darkness, the scroll secret remains undiscovered. We're going to keep going. We're getting really stressed out, but it's fine. And we had a mental break. All right. Uh, lately, it feels like I am constantly being distracted by lascivious thoughts and erotic fantasies. This man has such bad blue balls. His wife won't fuck him, so he's just got, like... Man, he's just got, like... Really bad blue balls. With all the hardships of my everyday life, it is too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clearly interfering with my life, but what should I do about them? We're gonna start working out. We're gonna, we're gonna start. We're gonna start lifting weights. We're gonna start running, running along the coastline of our capital, down by the trading hub our father built. We're gonna, we're gonna get in shape. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna put all these emotions. We're gonna lock them away, and we're gonna go running. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Are the Vikings causing chaos around Europe? It's 1066, so no, they're not. They're all Christians now. Not really. It's a united England underneath the Norman family. Uh, Poland. Yeah, no, the Vikings aren't really relevant anymore. Like, at all, to be honest. Requested video. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do it. Far Cry. All right. What do we got here? If she does not do what you desire, her mother, you can acquire. Welcome to the future. The year is 2007. No what the fuck is this, Condor? Nearly destroyed our planet. Now. Evil presence seeks to enslave what's left of humanity. And there's only one thing that can stop it. Nobody threatens my planet. Michael Bean is Sergeant Rex Power Colt. A Mark IV Cyber Commando who's part man, <laughs> part machine, and all American. 
Pulls out forever. He's got the science. He's got the firepower. This is actually kind of funny. And he's got the Robo Balls. That's a Rex Cole guarantee. This, this looks like it'd be made in like 1994. Evil. <laughs> he's more hero than any man on earth. This reminds me of Kung Fury. Fireman. Did y'all ever watch Twist. Kung Fury? Janitors. Those are the real heroes. He is Sergeant Rex. Power. Cold. That is a good name. That's a damn good name. And he's here to save the world. The moment when you realize you just laughed at. Far Cry 3. God damn it, Condor. That was actually pretty funny, but... Yeah, it reminds me of Kung Fury, which is an absolutely fantastic mini-movie. I assume that's what it would be called. Mini-movie. Something like that. There's been a lot of cop cars lately. What the fuck's going on in my town? Can't wait for that game. Yeah, it came out like a decade ago, so you probably don't have to wait for long. Even in the hope of a dusty glossary, the school is reluctant to share its secrets, but I press on. As the night progresses, the most incredible story unfolds before me. Arminius, the son of ooh, the son of the Germanic chieftain, had been raised in Rome, but plotted to forge an alliance of tribes to defeat the Romans. Arminius became an officer in the Roman general Varus, who advised him to take a detour through the Teutonberg forest. There Arminius launched a series of ambushes. Due to his Roman education, Arminius knew exactly how to combat the enemy tactics and lead his people to a decisive victory. We're gonna study the battle. We get advantage in forest and taiga. Nice. What's happening in Finland? Oh, um, just gen general chaos. Sweden's invaded, I guess. You're being invaded by the Swedes. A little bit early. Yup. Lots of Swedes in your in your general region. My head is really itchy all of a sudden. Really terribly itchy. I'm in the middle of a meeting right now, and I really shouldn't be scratching my itch. We've got fleas, don't we? I think we just got fleas. Or an allergic reaction. Neither are very good. Well, it appears due to, like, just constantly studying ancient books, we are going to become a strategist. But let's start thinking about uh, taking back Galura, though. Our half-brother owns it. We like him. We do like him. But uh, we definitely want it under our own control. So, we're going to conquer Galura, and then we are going to allow him to, to, to keep the title. But it is going to be under our control. We've got a lot of just general blue balls and just anger right now. And we're going we're gonna to deal with that by uh, invading our neighbor, our, our old territory. Oh, we might actually not win this. Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh, and we lost. And they have allies. All right, we have we have allies we can call as well, right? We should. We don't. We're going to need to get one fast. We dramatically underestimated how strong they were. We could we could get the whole HRE, but that's a little much. We're going to betroth our daughter to the Duke of Province, and then we're going to get him to come help us win this war. We're going to go hide in the mountains of Sardinia until he gets here. So Jedi Castoro just started a, a really dumb war that he, he was frankly not prepared for, but uh, we, we might survive it. We're just going to have to outrun the enemy. We've got a bunch of really renowned carpenters now. We're just gonna run around the aisle, and uh, we're being ch we're being chased right now by the enemy army. We're just waiting for our allies to show up here. 
All it cost was a daughter. It's, it's reasonable. Nothing riveting is happening today at the council meeting. I observe my counselors with disinterest as they argue about things that frankly are of little consequence. We're literally at war right now. We, we have bigger issues to be dealing with. How many gets the Black Death at 3 a.m.? Welcome back, Bitter. Alright, let's do this again. We're going to lead our men into combat. Like in Teutonburg Force that we read about. Except without the competence of Arminius or the, or the surprise attack. Basically just a regular battle. Alright, we have broken them. Wonderful. We're really going to siege out Galora, and then we will take it for ourselves. Our half-brother has proven to be very competent, I must say. He, he'll make a very good vassal, assuming he stays loyal. But he appears to not know when to give up. Spirited boy, but not strong enough to deal with our, our army and that of our allies. They just keep coming. They're going pretty good, Bitter. Going really good. Are we uniting Sardinia? We're going to conquer, yes. Jack Castoro, in order to deal with the emotions of having a wife that won't fuck him, is going to take out all that pent-up sexual energy on killing the other counts of Sardinia. I feel like that's a good reason to uh, invade your neighbors. Alright, we've taken it for ourselves, but we are going to give this back to our half-brother if we still can. Um, where is he? Yeah. We're going to invite him back to court. And then we're going to give him Galura back. Because we're not dishonorable. Oh, he completely... We can't do that, though, because we have to uh, we have to hold a duchy title, otherwise he'll just get independence. That's unfortunate. What do we need to form a duchy? We need one more de jure county, and then we'll need 250 gold. So we really have to only conquer one more person. We'll go after Tertulli. We can't, because then our brother will get it. We don't have a Cassius Belly on any other part of Sardinia. So we're going to have to find one. We will send our bishop on a trip to Arborea to get a claim over it so that we can uh, become an actual duke. CK3 is a fantastic game bidder. I absolutely advise it. Are you going to remove Kambab from Sicily? Possibly. Uh, but it appears that King Alberto has already done so. The Arabs have been kicked out of Sicily, I believe, entirely. Yeah, he's been he's been converted to Christendom. We are not in need of doing so, as it's been done for us. We lost all that stability in Galera that our father built, so we're going to have to send our marshal there, unfortunately. Who's the king now? That would be us. Castora. It's $50, I would have to wait to get it. No, it's not. Uh, you can get it for $20 on Kingwood, I believe. Let me check. You can get it for $11. Actually, Jesus, that's actually really cheap. But yeah, Castoro's king after uh, his father Galu died. We're now on our third character. Jedi Castoro, uh, he was supposed to be an administrator. He's a very competent steward. He's smart. Um, he's a misguided warrior. He's not very good at military combat. Unfortunately, uh, he's completely failed to romance and fuck his wife. And so he's got a lot of pent-up anger and aggression at this point, which we're going to roleplay into uh, Conquering Neighbors. So He's dealing with his problems in, in the way that you do during this time period. Oh, our wife's pregnant. The, the one time of year that we actually have kids over our wife apparently just happened. So that's good. That's really good to, good to see. Yeah. Let's find a wife for our half-brother, too. I 
How the hell is it that cheap but Steam sells it for much more? Because it goes on sale in other countries and then you still have the key and it converts over to be way less. So, yeah, you can get it for pretty cheap. I understand you are interested in deepening your grasp on warfare. Yugis glances down as he approaches me. Is he a giant? He looks like a giant. He's not a giant. Huh. Gojus is well known for his mastery of vicious charges and fierce attacks. Aggressive attacker. If there was one who could help me understand, it would be him. Sure. He's going to mentor us in hopefully becoming an aggressive attacker. We also need a new chancellor. We'll make our vassal a Porta Torres, our chancellor. Our heir is still our steward. He's not gotten any of the steward traits, unfortunately. And we are now a strategist. We're, we're an we're a armchair general, though. We've only fought in one war. We've only fought in two battles. All of our military knowledge has literally just come from us reading books. So we're literally an armchair historian. Or an armchair general. What's up, Turk Cisa? How's it going? You excited for tomorrow, man? I'm really looking forward to that Nile game. I think it's going to be very good. All right, we have a claim on Arborea. They have an infirm Jedi, one who uh, we like him a lot, but we, we need to expand so we can become a, a proper landed Duke. So we are going to invade him. Never mind. Who is he allied to? Ah, he's allied to both of the other Jedi of Sardinia. We don't currently have the men to win this. We're gonna need another very strong alliance. Our young son, Galu, is in need of a wife. We're going to find him one who will give us a good alliance. Not a lot of options here. The Yellow Sardinia has cast over the battlefield or the battlefield leading the armies. Okay, and, uh, is there, do I have a, a mod in chat right now? Could someone make that pull? Is there, is there a mod in chat right now? Not a lot of options. What about, uh... Oh, man. We're about to get an alliance of the, with possibly Byzantium? No, because it's someone else now. Aha! We had a daughter! Wonderful. Alright, what we have a daughter to betroth now. Perfect. We can betroth him to the heir of Cagliari, who is slow admittedly, but That'll knock them out, potentially. If we get an alliance with them, Arborea... Actually, I don't know how that works in CK3. If you're both allied to the same person, who gets to call them? We're about to find out. We've been very close to the Cagliari, uh, with the House of Cagliari for quite some time, and we are related with them, so let's, let's see how this goes. Yes, I am. I'm doing my prep right now. Hell yeah. Should I get the base game or Royal Edition? I'd say the base game and then uh, get Royal Court if you can afford it as well. Maybe he will die due to being a bad attacker. Possible. If you like the game, I would, in general, I would suggest a Royal Edition. You save money on the DLCs that way. Fair. Why am I looking forward to the Now game? Because there's been a lot of really good pre-diplomacy and the setting and the scenario of it are fantastic. And the game is entirely, I think, full right now. We're all, there's only one country, uh, one character still available in that game. All the other characters that we had for the sign-ups have been taken by really good role players, so it should be a pretty stacked game, to be honest. Cagliari is fighting against us. That's unfortunate. We married, we betrothed our, our youngest daughter for nothing. 
Oh my god, they have a very big army. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. No 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 no. No 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 no. No no no. We need to meet up with our allies. If we can see Jet Orbria, we might be able to get their uh, Jedi captured, and then we can end this war. The cost will be high, though. We don't have many more men than they do. Cool. This will be close. I assume he's not leading armies because he's infirm. Yeah, he's he's in his capital. If we see Jet Oristano, we will probably capture Jedi Jakapu, which means we will, we should win this war. We'll train Galu in combat some more. He has not improved. Aha! We captured him. Wonderful. Like I said, we captured the the Jedi, and we are able to enforce our demands and end this war. Now all we need is 250 gold, and we will be able to form the Duchy of Sardinia. Fantastic. A very successful war. We're not going to expand anymore. Again, we're, we're not conquering for conquering's sake. We want a title so we can actually give our holding titles away. We're also now the head of Sardinian culture. We've taken that from Corsica. Which apparently is actually independent from the HRE now. That's interesting. Maybe we can borrow money. Nope. Oh, what was that? We're gonna go running. We're gonna we're gonna go run run off some uh, some issues. I'm in the middle of my training when I spot uh, Kiridore Gregorio. Also exercising. I look him up and down. Not only does he appear to be in good health, but also at peak fitness. I would love to measure my prowess against his, but in what way? Should I take multiple factors into account if I wish to win? Raw strength or a mix that could include stamina and wits? Wrestling, sparring, running, um, or just, just fuck off. We're, we're, let's, let's spar with him a bit. He won. We did not win. That's unfortunate. Oh well, uh, not optimal. With his engagement to Theodosia, Alessandro, our son, has asked if he will be able to hold a wedding in, at my court. Um, no. We need the money to, to get a duchy title, so unfortunately not. Hamu did find that it was like 24 for the real edition. I don't know how the game operates, but I love learning through title and error. That's how I did for Hoi 4. I remember talking to you about that bitter. You would like refuse to watch tutorials. <laughs> Fuck. Alright, let's get some uh, control back to Galora. That'll be pretty slow. We're not making a lot of income. Generous really sucks. You lose a lot of income through it. I refuse tutorials for achievements in the NIK because some of them are just luck-based at times. Yeah. Like the Siberian one, for example. That's very luck-based. All right. Do we not... Hold on. One more time. Someone asked for a poll. There's no one in chat who made the poll. One last call. Are there any mods? Because if there are no mods, I'm going to make someone a mod. Um... There is a mod. No, can you make that poll that was requested by Samurai, please? Appreciate it, man. Alright, let's see if we've learned uh, to be an aggressive attacker again. We have a 56% chance, so let's see. And we have succeeded. We are now an aggressive attacker and a flexible leader. Wonderful. That's really good. That means if we attack defended positions, we can just absolutely slaughter people. Our second son has now grown up. He is a skilled tactician. He is ambitious, diligent, temperate, intelligent, and scarred. Pretty impressive, to be honest. Same with our daughter, Duchess Ilaria. 
of Provence. She's come of age, and she has, of course, been married to the Duke of Provence. Uh, she is diligent, trusting, chaste, and intelligent as well. We apparently are a pretty smart family. I mean, just grossly incompetent and uh, incredibly dysfunctional, but very intelligent. So that's, I guess, a redeeming factor. We've been invited to our daughter's wedding, so we'll, of course, go and attend that. In, in France, I believe. Wonderful. Uh oh, our wife got sick when we were away. Oh, we're talking with our daughter. As one plate of fluid is replaced by the next, my daughter, Duchess Solaria, goes on and on about trade routes. Nice. Uh, and that was how we savaged that mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you? Eh, we, we'd be interested. I guess we're going to befriend our daughter. That's cool, I guess. Hold on, we're a sodomite? <laughs> As Duchess Alaria's eyes widened at my words, I realized that I just what I just admitted to. I struggle to push my tankard away. I have had too much! I try and get up wobbling little. Don't trust the word I say. Apparently we're a sodomite. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I mean, we are bisexual, apparently, but... Our daughter now knows that we're a sodomite. We're friends, though, so hopefully we're cool, but... Oh boy. Probably need to stop drinking and saying things at feasts. Not a, not a good idea. Very right, wonderful. And our daughter is now friends with the Duke of Provence. So, they're probably going to have a happy marriage. That's that's good to hear. Hopefully that goes well for him. We are around 80 gold away from forming a duchy as well. Try to make it work too much to test. Alright, thank you, Note. Appreciate it. We'll go with Gallant. To the cold-hearted Jedi Kastoro, I've been corresponding with your Chancellor, and it has been a shameful diplomatic display. You're not the man I thought I was. That's the, uh, the Arshan of Corsica. He doesn't like us. Then again, he's shy and gluttonous, so he can fuck right off. Sorry for my bad pull. No, you're fine, Samurai. Don't worry about it, man. Leading armies. Thirty-nine gold away. This has been Jedex uh, Castoros' like sole ambition since he realized that he couldn't have a functional family life. So he's about to have all his ambitions come to fruition here. A historical moment in this man's life. And we also have... St we still have less troops than Cagliari, of course. Got a lot of income now, don't we? There we are. All right, we are going to make the Duchy of Sardinia. We are now a mighty Arch Arch Archon. Archon? How do you say that? How do you pronounce that? Archon? I'm going to say Archon. I'm just going to assume that's right. We can now grant uh, titles as well. So we are going to do what I said earlier, which is that we are going to we are going to grant Galu back Galura. As again, we did not intend to keep Galora when we took it, so we're going to make him our vassal. We are going to keep Oristiano, though. That we will keep for ourselves. Alright. We have 1,100 troops. Our income did go down when we granted Galora, but we are an honorable man, so we wanted to give that back, as we promised. 
and we own the northern uh, regions of Sardinia at this point. We are still weaker than Cagliari, though, which is just wild, but still. I'm gonna head out. Good luck. Uh, I'm gonna sit on to the thought of getting CK3. Sounds good, Bitter. I will see you around, man. Let's go ahead and keep developing the capital. We'll get a little bit stressed, but we can handle it. We're, we're just gonna go work it out. We're gonna spend like a month developing the capital city of Sasari, and then we're gonna go on like a week-long running trip along the coastline. Is what we're doing right now. So, dealing with those m emotions in a semi-healthy manner. We're being... You know that guy who we conquered and who I just gave back his territory? You remember that guy? The one out of the kindness of our heart, we gave back his title. Remember that guy? When we didn't have to? He just blackmailed us! Fuck! Fuck! My half-brother Galu has publicly denounced me as someone who lies with other men. As much as I might claim to be misunderstanding, the priests consider me a sinner in the eyes of God. What the fuck? We literally just gave this man back his territory. And he throws us right under the bus. Well, we are now known to be a sodomite. Fuck. That's what you get for being nice in Crusader Kings. That's what you get. Little fucking shit. He even really likes us, too. That's the crazy part. He has a hundred a hundred opinion of us, and he still blackmailed us. After we gave him back his title and we didn't have to. That is absolutely wild. Wow. I'm relaxing in a chair that sits next to the window in my room. Sunlight filters through the window and shines down on me. I feel its warmth. Nice. Kill him? Yeah, he, he definitely needs... To, we, we would definitely get... Well, what's our traits? Generous, callous, and diligent. We're generous, which is why we gave him back his title, but we're also callous, so we want revenge now, that's for sure. Many Same guy, by the way. Many months have passed since the lords and ladies of the realm gathered for a feast, my archon. Jedi Galu unwarily continues. It would benefit you not to mention those among us who appreciate a good feast, if this would remedy it soon. Fuck you. I'm also gonna get a save here. We are gonna plot his murder. We have been so kind to him, and he has given us nothing back but spit in our face. So we're gonna we're gonna have him murdered. Sweaty, tired, and in need of food, a long day of training with the troops is coming to an end. As we search for a place to camp, we spot an old and abandoned castle in the distance. Spreading my arms, I declare, that is where we will make camp for the night. The sun is setting, and with every step towards the ruin, it becomes more ominous before long the soldiers are whispering about ghosts. We're gonna go inside. Darkness, dampness, and desolation reign inside the castle, and all traces of life are gone. Peering up the king's stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down spiraling steps, I see only darkness reaching far down into the ground underneath the castle. We're not a coward, so we're going to go down there. We faced our fears. Wonderful. We're going to get our spy master to help with uh, murdering our, our brother. I believe he exposed us after we gave him a title like that is absolutely wild we'll get our wife to help us too there we go and then we'll bribe someone yeah, we should be looking pretty good there we go These are, we have two vassals as well. We have Porta Torres, uh, and then we have Galura. So he's really our only major vassal. It's a great way to start things off. The man in charge of cleaning the clothes of Jedi Galu's guards is brought before me. No one will notice him tampering with their clothes, and is something distracting for the guards could be planted. What would you have of me, my lord?
We'll go with murder progress. As, as much fun as that ever option is. Ah, he'll accept a vassalage. The Jedi of Tortoli will accept a vassal offer as long as we give him low feudal obligations, which I'm fine with. Again, we're not a tyrant. So we are going to diplomatically uh, vassalize the southeast region of Sardinia, which leaves only Cagliari. We have almost completely united Sardinia. Ironically, uh, Cagliari is actually still stronger than this. All they own is just that one city in the south, but it's very wealthy, I guess. So they're, they're still technically stronger than us. Not counting our familiar alliances, of course. Two farmers living under my jurisdiction uh, recently got into a major squabble. They were doing a business transaction and transcribed the amount of bartered goods on tally sticks. One farmer, however, tried to cheat the other by changing the amount of tallies on the stick. This was a stupid thing to do as the other farmer had copies of the tally sticks made. Now the fate of the cheating farmer is up to me to decide. We're going to imprison him. We just became the dynasty head. We became the dynasty head of our family by imprisoning someone and getting dread. That's about right. We're in charge because people fear us. Very, uh, very Italian. Very Machiavelli. We should build a temple at some point as well. Not that we have the income for that anytime soon, but still. We are probably going to murder him. He has a betrothed, uh, he's betrothed, but he's not married, so he has no heirs. We'll inherit his title when he dies. It's a shame I had to go this way, but he's dishonored us, and he's dishonored our family. He deserves nothing better than this. Our second son needs a wife. Could marry him to someone who's landed. That'd probably be a good idea. the commander so we want to keep him around for sure we don't want him going to another court we're 46 now getting pretty old Of stats to be honest. We have very high intrigue, but that's pretty much all because of our wife. She's very competent when it comes to that. So many of our children are intelligent. That's wild. Her diplo and her learning. Let's also teach them ourselves. A lot of gold to rebuild that thing. Bring control back to Arborea, and we are going to be in business. My agents have scheduled a journey for Jedi Galu, which will take them through a dark wood. All that is missing is a band of thugs that will tragically slay them in a highway robbery gone wrong. I can already imagine blood seeping into the dark soil. Kistora has gone down a pretty dark path, hasn't he? My god. All from blue balls, too. And he is dead. The thugs did their job, and Jedi Galu is no more. As the travel party stopped to camp in the evening, bandits poured out through among the trees, calling for blood and gold. The soldiers fought back, but thankfully it was not enough. Jedi Galu was tragically slain in the melee. The bandits are now hunted by all, and no one ever suspects my involvement. Good. We've, we've murdered our brother for exposing us as a sodomite. 
A few bear attacks recently occurred at the edge of town in Galura, killing several people each time, including a couple of my minor officials. Though uncommon, such tragedies are not unheard of. And what is more disturbing is that it has been verified by one of my officials who witnesses all the attacks that the same bear was behind those separate incidents. The bear managed to get away each time before the town guards could do anything about it. So everyone in the area is on edge. We'll send some guards to go kill it. And they failed to do so. The bear is still out there. Fuck. That's unfortunate. Our brother-in-law is willing, willing to become vassalized. We have diplomatically united Sardinia. Wow. Cagliari has agreed to become a vassal underneath for, for a low levy and low tax contribution. Yeah, we've, we've united Sardinia. Wow. Wonderful. Well, I thought we were going to end up doing that militarily, but in the end, Sardinia actually became ours primarily diplomatically. I mean, we conquered Galur from the Muslims, and then again from uh, from our from our brother, and then Orsiano we we took directly. We fought for that, but the rest of the uh, Sardinia came along peacefully, which is interesting. Not the way I expected this to go. I think that calls for a feast to celebrate. A united Sardinia. We will hold a great feast in Cesari. Eating was well underway. I drinking a little too far along when Castor Curadora Gregoru decided it was time for some horse riding. My stables were locked up tight, but with the guidance from Jedi Sebastianu, Gregorio soon led a group of eager riders inside. With absolutely no control over my animals, there was swearing, laughter, and broken bones. As men and women fell from horses ambling around the hall. Other creatures in the stables did not get away much easier, and one goat nearly caved under the weight of Archer Nessa Margot. Our wife was riding a goat. That's about, that's about right. Sounds like a fun time. A good feast. A memorable feast. To celebrate the unification of Sardinia. Whoa. Tuscany just got vassalized by Sicily. Italy is almost already united underneath Sicily. Wow. Piedmont, Pisa, the Papal States in Venice are still independent, but... Wow. That's pretty wild. What would it take for us to make the kingdom of Sardinia? We should be able to. Yeah. We just need one more duchy, so we need to conquer Corsica. We're gonna go on a hunt. We are not going to drive the peasants out. We're not we're not sadistic, so. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, I'll be right back.
They're gonna cause the creation of 1145 Napoleon. They need to make a modern day Victoria 3 EU5 style game. I would love to do a grand campaign of CK3 EU5, uh, Vic E3, Hoi4 modern day game, and Stellaris. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I don't think they will though. Modern, modern politics and modern, uh, just the setting. I think Paradox would probably see it as being too political, and they won't do it, because it'll cut into their profits. They try and stay very out of politics so that they can make money off of, like, everyone. That's what I've noticed. Like, kind of how, you know, they've made <laughs> fascism and, and communism so viable in Hoi 4, so they can make all the money off the, the little tankies and werewolves. Cold War, then, yeah, Cold War would be pretty cool. I mean, they, they had talked about an East versus West game, but it never got made. U5 has a lot of political stuff. Yes, but it's set in a very different time period, so it's not as hot as, like, modern politics is, you know? Modern politics are very divisive. People feel very strongly about them. Cuts into their profit margins if they do that. And I'm sure their investors and stockholders are... Not, not for that. We're going to hold off on... Actually, we really don't like the Archon of Corsica. He's shy, diligent, gluttonous, and reclusive. Didn't we have an event with him, too, where he did something to us? I can't remember now. Modern politics will have Newton invade others. Yep. Make money off of all the Grishas. I'm not stressed at all anymore. So I'll, I'll wait to go. I'll wait to go running again. He's 49. He's pretty old. He's not going to want to fight another war. He's already united Sardinia. So maybe our son will invade Corsica. But it's not going to be us. Our son does have gout though. That's a problem. What's he even doing? Ah, bringing control. We'll get the last bit of control in Lagodoro, and then all of Sardinia will be at max control. So that means it's a very stable place, very safe, no worry about bandits or being robbed or anything like that. Our stun can still marry. Let's uh, marry him to the daughter of the Duke of Flanders. It's a, it's a very good marriage. Our daughter has learned nothing. We tried to train her a bit in combat. She did not take to it. We're going to repair the Tours Romance, which is one of our family's historical books. Our son would like his wedding to be at court. Yeah, we, we can afford it. We'll do it. Gout sucks. I find it funny how the big money-making diseases never have cures found for them. Yeah, I mean, cures for diseases are also very hard to come by, to be fair, for the most part. But I'm not a STEM major, so I can't say that. The wedding is dwindling down, and I find myself deep in conversation with my meticulous daughter, Duchess Ilaria. She inquires about my opinion of the blessings of marriage, a subject she is deeply interested in herself. We've befriended our daughter. Wonderful. She does live in Provence, but it's not actually that far away from us, so... We're, we're probably just going to be writing letters on and off to our daughter. It's good to actually have a good relationship with your children. Since we we, we don't have one with our wife, so that's that's something, I guess. Are we missing a physician? No, we have one. The wedding went very well, and they have befriended each other. Good. Our fa our son is following in our footsteps and having no love for his wife, but they are friends, so that's good, I guess. Yes, I mean my friend. I still hate playing tall in this. I know. Lampar, you're a hoy player. You you want to paint. You you want to paint it all, which I feel, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a CK3 painter. I didn't go to art school. When did we get all these men at arms? I did not recruit them. They must have come with, our, with the territories that we've taken. At some point, I do want to actually try and get involved in the uh, Iberian conflict as well, but we'll see. We're at our nephew's wedding. Actually, like EU4 more. Oh, you're more into EU4 these days, Helen Park.
We'll develop the capital some more. And we're going to go on a run as soon as this wedding is over. Wedding, 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 I swear. That's what old age is when you have a lot of kids and grandkids, I guess. It's kind of realistic, actually. We're going to go take a run. Deal with our stress. Yes, yeah, so EU4 is absolutely map painting. You can play tall in it. Most people don't, though. Oversleeping as a diligent ruler. Not a not a good thing. RP is fun and all, but there's nothing to do while RP. You get bored and go to massacre everyone. I guess. Depends, like, you know, how you see it. I just get invested in, like, the long-term story of the family and stuff like that, and I like seeing, like, the realistic aspects in it, so... I don't... Very once in a while, I'll get a little bit bored with these types of playthrough, but for the most part, not really. It's always engaging. You can always do other sorts of stuff. You just need to make sure that you, uh, get interesting characters, and that you make them interesting, and that you give them education that's not just military, otherwise you will be bored. A difficult-looking man demands an audience. My name is Nagola. You may have encountered my beautiful sculptures on the Calvaries next to the roads of your dominion. I thought you might want to become my benefit benefactor, indeed as my name has become quite famous among your subjects. Both of us could benefit from this partnership. He's ugly and sterile. Uh, as proof of my good faith, I would create a unique and masterful sculpture for you to display wherever you wish, showing your immense piety to the world. Sure. I have discovered the most appalling truth about Jedi Sebastianu. Though I love to bring this matter to your attention, I must inform you that this man is keeping secrets of the most alarming kind from you. Ah, he has a lover. I mean, to be fair, he's not married, but, you know, I guess that's important. How can you push the education of your children towards other areas? I will not, I, I, I was not yet to understand that. Uh, when you get it, when you get a kid, um, when they're young, you click on the education focus and you can choose which one you want. And they'll get more of those traits and get, like, that type of, uh, education. What's up, TARDIS? How you doing, man? What's up? Marshal Goyges raises a city guard report concerning the arrival of a small troop of armed men in the city. Upon investigation, I ascertain that they are legitimately in the employ of a traitor in sacred lollocks, relics, just arrived in the city. Hearing the news, Bishop Saluri grows very excited. A traitor who bears the expense of such an escort might be carrying something very holy and very pricey. What well, wonders what I gain for the Cathedral of Lagodoro. Before the tent of the relics merchant, several large tables display mundane religious items such as rosaries and candles. As Bishop Saluri and I approach, a wealthy man emerges from the tent, which is Alfonso. My lord, your excellency, come in the shade of the tent, where I can present you wares worthy of your rank. The merchant presents a narrow box in which small silver containers stand in a row. Ampule, filled with holy oil from the most important sites of the faith. This one here also contains a pebble from Jesus' empty tomb. Or this one, just look at the fine etchings of the baptism of Christ. It exemptionally holds water, not oil, but it is water drawn from the exact spot John the Baptist stood in Bethabara beyond the Jordan. Encouraging by our increased curiosity, the merchant closes the tin slap and whispers, perhaps then is the most unique treasure. After retrieving a heavy key from beneath his tunic, the merchant unlocks a small drawer hidden in the underside of a standing desk and returns to us with a small pouch. Please come closer and behold, he beckons. Once Saluri and I have joined the merchant, he unties a knot and reveals what looks like a tiny fleck of parchment or pink hued leather. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the holy foreskin removed from our Lord Jesus Christ eight years after his birth. An angel gave it to King Charlemagne, who presented it as a gift to Pope Leo III. Alas, it was soon therefore lost, the merchant explains. It is most miraculous. In particular, it protects women during pregnancy and childbirth. Our bishop is overcome with emotion and awe. This must have a place of honor in my cathedral, he says with fervor. Fuck, <laughs> <Black> man. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll help him buy it. 
we'll help him buy it, I guess. It's only 30 gold for Jesus' foreskin. Um, so I guess we'll buy it. Jesus Christ, man. He's just, he's just got like a pouch with a foreskin in it. It's kind of sus, man, honestly. Sardinia is now becoming Europe's one of Europe's hottest Christian uh, destinations for pilgrimages. People from all over the continent are coming to see the foreskin of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's beautiful. <laughs> Upon concluding the homily, Bishop Solari nods to an attendant. The tall purple drape that covered the wall behind the altar is lowered, revealing a newly assembled mosaic of Christ hanging from the ceiling. A golden cylinder, looking like a scroll case or censer, hovers before the mural. Through God's grace, we have been chosen to be the custodian of the most holy foreskin, Christ's very own flesh, the bishop announces in a hushed silence. Indeed, as St. Luke states, and when eight days have accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named after the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is so fucking weird, man. Almost as one, the whole congregation moves forward to peer at this miraculous relic, crying tears of joy and loud in God. The cathedral's fame will soon spread. God fucking damn it, that is absolutely ridiculous. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I don't, I don't really know what to say about that. To be honest. We're now the guardians of the holy foreskin. Is it an item that we have? No, it's not. Does our bishop have it? I assume our bishop will have it. No, he doesn't. I'm traveling in a less populated area and more rugged part of my realm when my entourage and I come across a number of corpses and the stench of decaying flesh is noticeable to everyone. Judging by the army, armor and clothing of the bodies, as well as the wounds on them, it seems that this may have been the scene of a recent battle between rival bandit gangs that infest this region. We'll give them some food. Alright, let's try and train our daughters in sword fighting. Come on, you got it. Oh, she improved! Margot has learned a lot as improved skill arms, and now the ladies won't leave him alone. It's just a daughter! It's a, it's a, it's a woman! Unless she's, I guess, gay, then go her. She somehow became lustful, um, lear learning to fight. As you do. Have I mentioned how weird and dysfunctional our fucking family is? Like, even by CK3 terms, it's not like that normal weird way, which is just incest. It's just, it's just a really weird family, man. Like, they're really weird. They're so fucking weird. She likes the sword, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. She improved again, my god. She's very good at fighting. She's rowdy and lustful. She's a bold knave. She does like being hit with swords, apparently. It's, it's her thing. She, uh... She, she enjoys it quite a lot. Given that we're a sodomite, the apple doesn't far, fall, fr fall far from the tree. God damn it, I can't speak. I am shocked when I caught Margot trying to steal from the travel chest of the visiting Curadora Natalia. She confessed she had thought she could get away with it, but not before it was wrong. She becomes honest. That's good. Context is so important. Yes, it really is. The aura of the foreskin is causing the women in your court to bust their stats. <laughs> the holy foreskin gives many blessings to the house of Taurus. You know. As, as one would expect. Another fucking feast in Cagliari. Jesus Christ, we're gonna get fat at this rate. The feast is dwindling down and I find myself deep in conversation with my honorable vassal, Jedi Pedru. He inquires about my opinion on parties, a subject he is deeply interested in himself. Conversing about parties rather than partying at parties. Interesting. We'll, we'll talk to him about parties, I guess. Let's go upgrade the port of Arborea as well. We want Sardinia to be a very wealthy trading uh, island, so we're going we're gonna to fund that ourselves. 
What right does Vittori think he has to claim that my ideas of warfare are misguided? Claiming that my ideas would break down the moment combat is met. What does he know, really? Please note that we've only been in two battles in our whole life, and uh, we've read all of our battlefield experience in books, so he's probably not wrong, to be honest. What's the question, Sand? How many did you hear about the renewed fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan? Yeah, a couple hundred people have died. Yes, I have. It's getting spicy. Have you banged men yet? Yes, absolutely. We, we are a sodomite, and we're bisexual, so yes. The holy foreskin makes women lesbian. Perhaps. It's possible. Russia's fear of influence is collapsing right now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a paper tiger, and we all see them for what they are now. Hiding behind Manukes is not really a good way to instill fear in your neighbors. We've gotten a pretty good income again. We've gotten very wealthy, which is good. Ar Ar Archon Castoro in his elder years is really just focused on administering his realm, so when his son inherits, he will be in a very good place. Our titles are going to be split m amongst our children, because we have, we have two sons, so hopefully he gets two titles, but we'll see. Kazakhstan has been ignoring Russia for the last few weeks and making big overtures towards China. Yep, China put out a statement about that, backing the sovereignty of Kazakhstan, I think yesterday or the day before, right? So, yep. It did worsen after the summit. Yep, not surprised. Putin is not going to, like, stop fighting the war in Ukraine, and China really doesn't like that war because it's not, it's hurting them. So. To the loathsome Archon Kastorum, we have been burdened with your oppressive laws for far too long. No more. We are done paying you taxes. Once your cough is dry up and your larders are empty, you will wish you had treated us more fairly. Fuck you. Call the banners! We're gonna put down these fucking rebels. We're gonna send our son into battle. Where is he? He's incredibly competent, but he needs some experience. He should do fine. Easily dispatched. No problem at all. Even our incompetent military son couldn't fuck it up. He's a good lad. He's just... He's not made for fighting. Didn't they support it a week ago? They said something about ethnic Russians living there. Yes, but, like, they only made, like, little minor, like, suggestions of it. Because, like, they want to keep their relationship with Russia, but they know it's, like, hurting them to be dealing with Russia, with the West, in this circumstance. China, as usual, is just doing whatever, like, fits their interest. They're a, the definition of real politic in the modern world. Well, we have a good relationship with our wife slash friend in our later years. That's good. We lost our antiquarian. We'll hold off on that for now. We don't really need any new relics. We're going to put him as our marshal, and then we are going to make Jedi Pedru of Cagliari our chancellor. Because he is very competent. I believe the Georgian army has units moving towards the border of South Ossetia right now. Yeah, Georgia is currently holding a vote on whether they want to go to war with Russia over the annexed regions of Abkhazia and Ossetia, right? I believe. Isn't there, aren't they doing a vote on that? I thought I read something about that. We can't upgrade our keep, so we're going to save up for that. A deviant on the loose. As I retreat to my chambers for the night, I stumble upon one of my guests, Slustinu in my innermost sanctum. How did he get in here? It is not what it looks like, my lord, he claims. The fact that he is half naked in the process of bodily defiling my grandmother's portrait tells me that it is, in fact, exactly what it looks like. This mood's pissing on, like, one of our family portraits. What the fuck? Oh, because he's a deviant. Oh. We can also become a deviant. We're not going to do that. We're going to put him in the dungeon. <laughs> Fucking hell. He's a sexual deviant, which is apparently... His thing is just 
like pissing on portraits of like famous people. Very, very specific, honestly. God damn. Whatever floats your boat, but unfortunately, we caught him, so he's going to prison. You know that you can literally call the Kremlin, they have a number on their website, it's so weird. Really? That is surprising. They just found a mass grave near Izium. I read about that, yep. I mean, Russia's well known to have committed a lot of war crimes, a lot of which we don't know about yet. She improved again! Oh my god. She is so competent at fighting, wow. Sex demon, yes. Russia's beginning to look like a paper bear. If you can hold it out for a few months against them, you make uh, life hell for the Russia's military. Yeah. Or, I mean, it'd be very different if they fully mobilized, but they're unwilling to mobilize for economic reasons and because they're still pretending like they're not fighting a fucking war, which is... Which is absolutely just crazy. But I guess some people in uh, Russia are, actually believe it, so... They gotta... They gotta stick to their... They're bullshit. Notable guest has arrived. By the way, what have you done? Everyone seems to hate you a bit. Us? Uh, we're a sodomite. We, we are well known to fuck men. So, that's kind of seen as a bad thing by a lot of people. Russia cannot afford to fully mobilize. Yes, they couldn't in the beginning, and they sure as hell can't now. Yeah, exactly. They, they could do it. It would ruin their country, and it would collapse Russia. Putin also literally promised in the 2000s not to introduce conscription ever, but he has also promised to do a lot of things. We are not fighting a war, just conducting military exercises inside the territory without their consent. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's, it's completely legitimate. It's, it's just, you know, some, something you do. It's for fun, really. NATO at the moment be like, do it, Russia. Just one fucking meter to ballist, uh, Baltics or Scandinavia. Yeah, but that's that's probably a nuclear war, and I don't think anyone here wants that, so hopefully not. I mean, NATO would be king of the ruins of Europe, I guess, but... Ah, eh. the Jedi Kekliari died. No, he didn't. We'll make our son our marshal, and we'll put the Kiridor Grigariu back as chancellor. Let's build a vault, boys. What's up, Skova? The scary part with Russia is that everyone that is 21 to 22 years old or younger has never known a Putinless Russia. Putinism was likely longer for a time than Russia, even if he dies. Yes, absolutely. It's sad, too. I would love to see, like, a properly democratic, like, not oligarchic Russia. But to be fair, I'd also like to see a non-corrupt, non-oligarchic USA, so... Things that will never happen. We'll make our niece our spy master. Oh, we can change, uh, we can change the Jedi Kakagliari's, uh, contract. We're gonna give him a lot more taxes, is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna raise those taxes. Absolutely. Russia's population is very old. They can't keep doing wars anymore. Not after World War II. Don't understand why they're doing this. There's a, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons, but they're all not very good. We lost our physician. We definitely need a new one. And they're going to go to hunt, too. And our daughter failed to learn combat yet again. Marianu will do nicely. Paranoid, zealous, ambitious, astute, intellectual, renowned physician. That'll work. The noise from the others have faded away by the time my son Galu and I walk up on the stag. We are almost within striking distance when Galu whispers to me, Now that we are finally finally by ourselves, there is something I have to tell you about our Chanessa Margot. Our wife? Hold on. What What is our wife doing? 
Our wife is doing something that's more important than killing a, a deer. He didn't tell us! What the fuck is our wife doing? She's a magnanimous villain. <laughs> fuck. Do we, did we, where do you see secrets? She's a cannibal? Oh shit! Let me just, let me just restate what just happened. We just went on an absolutely lovely hunt in the mountains of Sardinia to de-stress. It was a time to just chill out with our son, kill a deer, get some good venison, have a great time. We, we've been looking forward to this for a while. And right when we were about to kill that, uh, that deer, not before when we were going there, not after we had killed it, right when we were about to kill it, our son decides to just say, hey, by the way, my mother, your wife and friend, remember when we don't like each other, She's a cannibal. He's really not good with timing, is he? Like, goddamn son. I appreciate you telling us that, a, that your mother is a cannibal, but it was not the right time. We could have killed a deer, and then we would have been happy, and then you could have said that our wife's a cannibal. We, we would have taken that a lot better, you know? As I said, just such a dysfunctional family. Look at Intrigue. Yeah, so we, we know that uh, our wife is a cannibal. Yeah. On that note, we've got a video to watch. So, what, what, have, we, what have we got? Fucking hell. This family. Realistic Russian recruiting video. Alright, it's on Reddit, so it's gonna be really weird. день твоей новой жизни то что было вчера не имеет значения то кем ты был прежде уже никого не волнует теперь важно то кем ты будешь сегодня что ты знаешь о себе на что ты способен спокойно спать узнать тебя two weeks of basic training возможностей к черту границы ты готов ломать себя до изнеможения каждый день здесь боль закаляет шрамы your backup is 40 miles away. Your commander is drunk. Oh man. Salary is from $175. That's <laughs> the Ukrainian washing machine. Alright, that's pretty fucking funny. God damn it. That's that's pretty good note. God damn it. Oh, fuck. Can't do video requests. You will be able, you'll be able to do it in a little bit. Unfortunately, the Russians losing legs in life in Ukraine are, for the most part, the foreign and un unimportant and partly problematic minorities east of the Ural Mountains. Oh, yeah. No. Russia's making the people they don't like do their dirty work as usual. Absolutely. I do feel sorry for a lot of the Russian soldiers who I know don't want to be there. EVGA just terminated their relationship with NVIDIA. No more EVGA RTX graphics cards. Soviet Union versus Russia today. Who wins? Soviets. Easy. No, no comparison. All right. Can I get a poll? Uh, can one of my mods make a poll? Should we or should we not blackmail our wife for being a cannibal? We really love we really like her a lot, but she did friend zone us um, when when we were younger, causing a lot of stress and frankly a lot of dead Sardinians due to us resolving our issues. So the question is, do we blackmail our wife or do we not blackmail our wife for being a cannibal? Can I get a poll for that? Someone who's a mod? I'm glad the Chechens revolted against you, Russia and Ukraine. I think, I, I don't know. It's a tough one. Do, do we blackmail her or not? Do we blackmail our wife for being a cannibal? It's tough. It's tough. See, it's because she's chased. She, 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 she isn't able to, to, to get, you know, her needs met. So she's, she's put that into something really fucked up, which is cannibalism. It's honestly kind of sad, but... Yeah, Soviets were way bigger. Their arsenal was way more advanced at the at the time that they were around too. Should have had a third option join in. Eh. Can we ask to become a cannibal with our wife? 
No, we cannot. We cannot request to also become a, a cannibal. That's unfortunate. I'm going to send my son to become a physician. We're going to sponsor him to become a physician. He can be a warrior and trained uh, to, to heal people. That'd be pretty cool. Not a lot of good options for Marshall. I guess we'll do Jedi Marianu. Too many drums. There you go. There you go. You ever get the event where if you go to a party and so on, your rivals go there, you get the option to shut the doors and lock everyone inside and torch the building, you end up killing like 40 people? No, I've never got that before. What's up, Moose? How are you doing? Hope everything's alright with you, man. Who are you in the Nile game? I am playing Yorgos the Third of Mercuria. The Cannibal Kingdom of Sardinia, right on Rome's doorstep. Oh, they don't know. What they don't know doesn't hurt them. Unworthy peasants. Yes! Alright, we're gonna blackmail our wife. Sorry about this, honey, but you are eating people. So, you know. We might become rivals with our wife. Aha! We now have a hook on our wife, because now she knows that we know that she's a cannibal. So We're going to use this as an opportunity to seduce our wife again, because we have a hook on her. Some, that's some big brain shit right there. We're going to use our knowledge of her being a cannibal in order to seduce her. Yeah. Don't ask me the logistics of that. You don't want to know. But we are going to utilize this to our advantage. Oh, it's a great... Moose, we've had the absolutely best, most functional relationships ever in this game so far. It's beautiful. She's going to eat you a little Archon now. Yeah. 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 There is that. I've been made aware that Archoness and Marga is very close to her friend Hughes. He's probably missing a finger or two. Getting his uh, favor might help me catch Marga's attention. Yeah, sure. He has a hook on us now, though. That's unfortunate. The next time we meet, Margot offers me a wider smile than usual. My friend Hughes told me how you helped him, and I want to offer my thanks. Ah, yes. The good old cuck tactic. Love my goddamn cock for eternity or I expose you, heathen. Yes. The Nile is not tiered RP, Samurai. You're welcome to join, but I believe there is only one character left in that game. Everyone else has been reserved. That, it's a very full game. Did Harold literally write a giant poem for that game? Harold literally just wrote a giant poem. Wow, for that game, for the Nile game. That's crazy. It's impressive, actually. The celebrations had come to an end on the evening entertainment seemed to be over. When Arconessa Margot suggested reading, a clerk soon arrives uh, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my chance to impress Marganessa. Alright, last time we tried to learn something, and she fucking hated that, so we're gonna try and be entertained. She didn't like that either. She does like our nephew, though. <laughs> Fuck! Archon Kistora is good at many things. Seducing his wife, not one of them at all, in any way, shape, or form. We can do another Dynasty Legacy as well. All right, recommendation. What's our next Dynasty Legacy? Which one should we go for? I'll do. We'll do a poll for this. What do we want to go with next? So let me change this music because this is this is from Medieval Total War in Americas. All right, we got blood. What else do we have? What program do you use to make the medieval look papers that you posted in the Nile chat? Sand, I use a, um, I can send it to you. I use the transparent background pa parchment document that I change with uh, Photoshop. I can send it to you if you'd like. Blood? Nothing else? Do you see my Crimean Tartars RP post? Yes, I did. Going once. Going twice. All right, we've got glory now, too. Blood, glory, anything else? Ken? Alright, what's up, Lollipop? How you doing? Blood, glory, and kin. Would one of my mods please make a poll for that? I would appreciate it. I 
Also, did the prediction ever get ever get finalized? Cause like we we didn't get conquered by Sardinia. No, it did. It did get uh, decided. I'm also gonna start a prediction right now. I haven't done a prediction in a while. I need to start doing more of them. All right, we're gonna do a prediction. Oh fuck! I did it at the same time. Hold on. I'll, I'll start it when uh, when that poll's done. Thank you, whoever made that. Zero percent chance of improving. To be fair, she already has a prowess of 19. Our daughter is lustful, honest, and just. We're, we're not... Also, I'm going to break her betrothal. We betrothed her to the heir of Cagliari because he promised uh, to help us in wars. And then he didn't, so fuck him. But again, he is the heir. She can do better than that. We love our daughter. We, we've trained her in combat from a young age. We're not going to marry her off to some fucking second-rate count of Cagliari. We're going to we're going to marry her off to someone actually fitting. We can get a matrilineal marriage on Cagliari. Let's do that. All right. We 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 rebetrothed our daughter to the Jedi of Cagliari with a matrilineal marriage. So, I'm I'm okay with that. She is absolutely going to be in charge. She's an absolute beast. So, I'm fine with that. She'll be one of our vassals, essentially. My god. She'll be running things in Cagliari. Man. It's fine with me. Alright, Galu has been trained as a physician. Wonderful. Very competent lad. What's up, Scoby? How you doing? We want to be very breedable and powerful sea trading kingdom. King of HRE Mary. Je Jedi. Car uh, Jarl. Jedi is the title for, like, the judge or the king of Sardinia. It was a title used in Sardinia during the medieval time period. Oh my god! The servants have all been sent away and our beds have been decorated with roses. As Archoness and Margot enters my chambers, she smiles carefully and joins me without any hesitation. With the help of hands, blah blah blah. Alright, I'm not getting into that. Anyway, we seduced our wife. It only took... Hold on. It only took... 35 years. It only took 35 years. But we have seduced our wife. Fantastic. Fantastic. Blood and glory are tied. We'll go blood. Blood's good. We all know blood's good. I'll go with that one. This is a historical day, ladies and gentlemen. We, we have successfully bedded our wife and she didn't not enjoy it like normal. So that's, that's a huge plus. It wasn't a chore for our wife. To be fair, she knows we're a sodomite, and we know she's a cannibal. So we're united through knowing that we're both pretty, gonna be pretty unpopular if people know about us. So we've kind of, I feel like, we've bonded over, um, over, over our, our unlikable features. We'll go with that. You know? So, as I said, just incredibly dysfunctional, as usual. Hamu Vampire confirmed. She's a fucking, uh, capital, what the fuck? Cannibal? Oh, yes, our wife is a cannibal. Absolutely. Yep. She's a full-blown cannibal. Also, she's chased, which is really weird. Alright, we are going to be saving up to upgrade our keep again. We've been a little distracted recently trying to seduce our wife, but we are getting back to administering Sardinia and ensuring that we can build up a great uh, a fortress in Cesari, overlooking the ocean, where we go running in the evenings. Gotta have that view. We'll, we'll develop the capital, and then we'll go running. It behooves an archon to spend time at sea, and with a salty air in his face and a fine breath beneath his feet. Today is sees my personal craft and small escorting squadron out for drills, practice, and pleasure. The short voyage has been an exhilarating chance of pace, change of pace from life at court when we spot it. A distant plume of water followed by a small island of wine-dark flush rolling out of the waves. It is a whale. We're gonna harpoon the fucker. Aha! We succeeded! We just killed a whale. We harpooned it. Ourself, at age 55. It's because we're athletic. All that running has paid off. We harpooned a whale. I'm in the middle of my training when I spot Ulf. Also exercising. I look him up and down, not only does he appear to be in good health, but also peak physical fitness. I would love to measure my prowess against him, but in one way. Alright, we go running a lot, so we're going to try and race him. Who won? God damn it. No, he won. Fuck. It's because he's, he's 10 years younger. And a eunuch. 
Yeah, that's what we're gonna tell ourselves. Uh, she probably eats all the men your character brings into bone. Yeah, pretty much. We screw them and then she eats them. It's a, it's a very functional family dynamic. You had a whale for a, for a time doing that, huh? Oh, absolutely. It was a whale of a time. Exactly. Okay. We almost have enough to upgrade our keep. Well, I was going to do a prediction to see if we successfully seduced our wife, but given that's already happened... Here's what we'll do. Will our son have a loving marriage? <laughs> Alright, we're going to do a poll. Will our son, who's about to inherit, will he have a loving marriage with his wife? Or will it be as dysfunctional as all of the other members of our family? We'll, we'll do a prediction for that. If you miss the whale, do you get the Moby Dick eludes me modifier? I you you get the something eludes me. I think you get something like that. I think something along those lines. I'm gonna keep training Margot in combat. You never know; she might improve. My spy master had brought a priest brought before for the revelation and judgment of a grand conspiracy. However, when the priest refused to confess, a curador and Natalia had absolutely no evidence or support for her accusations. We're not arbitrary, so we're going to go with that. Zero percent chance of improving. God damn it. When a man bones young men and the wife eats them after, the whole family gets a little something. It's a, it's a, beauti it's a beautiful marriage. It's just a beautiful dynamic. Sure, she's going to be generous. You have never 86 gold, not too far off. Oh, I've been sent a letter. Nice. I'm glad that Turk typed that out because I can absolutely not read that cursive handwriting. <laughs> Holy shit. I can never read cursive very well, pretty much ever. 56. We are definitely getting up there. Wait, I still have roulette? I don't remember still having roulette. I can post it again without cursive, don't worry. No, you're fine, Turk. You posted it so I can just read the thing that you posted. So close. Three gold away. Come on. We spent the last five years just preparing to upgrade our fortress in Cesari, and we are going to succeed in doing so now. A lot of knights. We'll invite more of them to court, and when we have the money, we'll go ahead and recruit some more. Italy is looking really interesting. Tuscany got independence again. Emilia has gotten independence. Piedmont has gotten a lot bigger and conquered Pisa, and Sicily still is holding out in the south. Interesting. Iberia is absolutely wild. Castile's disappeared entirely. That's pretty crazy. All right, Margaret has come of age. She is an astute intellectual. She is just, honest, and lustful, and she has a prowess of fucking 19. God damn. Not a tactician, but she's very good at fighting. And we are going to, of course, marry her to uh, the Jedi of Cagliari. Keep them loyal. It's a matrilineal marriage, so their children will be of our dynasty, not his. But we are of a similar dynasty, so it's fine. The contents of the letter is not in the text above. Ah, then yes, could you please redo it, Turk, because there's no way I can read that unless you type it out for me. I saw Moon Knight the other day. I did not know Konsu was a real god. Is he actually real? I thought he was just like an MCU thing. Sicily has papacy islands in the middle. All is right. Do they? Oh, in the middle of Italy, yeah. My nephew, Jedi Marianu, has been hovering around my council meetings lately. Knowing his interest in matters of leadership, I cannot help but feel that the man is waiting for me to impress him. I could probably engage him in conversation. On the other hand, it might be better for him to simply see me interacting with my men. There's something to be said for at least pretending to know every soldier's face. Hmm. 
we're going to pilgrimage. We're 57. We're probably starting to be thinking about our eternal soul. So, I think we're going to go on a pilgrimage if we can afford it. We'll go to Jerusalem. Oh, he is real. Konsu. Oh, wow. I did not know he was real. His name means traveler. Nightly travel of the moon across the sky. Damn, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. I didn't, I didn't care for Moon Knight too much. The themes in it were solid, but I thought the writing in the story was kind of mediocre, to be honest. I did I did watch it all, but... Yeah. Not my favorite. Our lantern is going to break soon. We'll need to repair that when we can. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. I haven't watched any of the new Marvel series, and the MCU has gotten really uh, gone to shit since Endgame. Yeah, it's pretty mediocre. I don't, I don't watch much of it nowadays. Natalia has also come of age. She is an adequate bargainer, and she is unbetrothed. There's the King of Aragon, who is. Let's see what we could do with potentially a, a matrilineal marriage, though. We're going to betroth her to the King of Aragon. That's a that's a good alliance to have. So Aragon or Barcelona? Kingdom of Aragon. Oh, he is tiny. Oh my god, that might not be a good idea. Saracos has conquered almost all of Aragon. We'd have to help him take back his lands if we want him to be even remotely powerful. Damn. We've discovered the Arched Saddle. Let's finish our Chronicle writing as well. That's literally three months away. We've done, we've actually researched almost all the tech up to High Medieval now. There we go. Yep, we have done all the techs in Early Medieval. Let's do... We'll do hoardings first. I really hope they don't fuck up Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The writing on that has tended to be pretty good, so I think it should be at least solid, I hope. Ah, Galu has had a, son, a, a daughter, a granddaughter. We'll give her a martial education, and we'll teach her ourselves. I just realized that the start date of your game is the Lighthouse of Andrew. Alexander is still there. Really? Was it? It got burned way before that, I thought. Must unite Sardinian people underneath our flag. Ah! We've been burdened with your oppressive laws for far too long. How many times do I need to teach these stupid fucking peasants to not understand their place? Well, it gives us some, uh, some practice, I guess. We'll raise our men, and we're going to get our heir to lead them. Alessandro, again, not a very competent commander, so he needs some experience here. What's up, Coco? Yeah, dumb fucking peasants, exactly. Well, we're going to teach them by slaughtering them. We didn't even get a chance to. He died sieging out our territory. That's... The man starts a peasant revolt and doesn't even have the dignity to not die before we fight him in combat. That's just, that's just embarrassing for him. Yeah, the lighthouse was partially cracked and damaged by earthquakes in 96 and 51, followed by structural collapse of earthquake in 956. Really? So it was still around. It had already gotten burned, though, because it got burned when, uh... When uh, Julius Caesar uh, went to Egypt. No, Octavian, wasn't it? I think it was Octavian when he was fighting uh, Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Wasn't that, that when it got burned? I know it was the Romans. 
Can I check DMs? Yes, in just a moment. So it's a shame they did not repair it. They 100% had the time to. Sure. is our culture actually Sardinia is only on these islands it's nowhere else it's Catalan and Miorica hmm. Cisalpine <laughs> Duke Alanapoas has announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to insularism Having become disillusioned with the teaching of the Catholic priests, the nobles of Paulus no longer consider clergy to be righteous and true, and are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. They are instead professing themselves insularists, whose doctrines they feel better align with God's will. Well, that's... that's disgusting. Fucking heathens. Kinda said that the Hang Gardens of Babylon never survived, would have loved to have gotten the chance to see them. Same here, that's the one I'd probably be most interested in seeing from the ancient world. Though the Temple of, Temple of Artemis would have been pretty cool too. Burn, but still remained. What I suggest, once you get to EU4, we become a pirate republic that requires we stay off the mainland and we form a pirate republic. Yes. Someone already recommended that, and assuming the RP doesn't go a very different direction, I'm not opposed to that. Right, we have a we have a hook on him, and we are going to use that to raise his taxes yet again. We've changed them too recently. God damn it! Ah, a papal envoy has reached my court, bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Sylvester issued a call of arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As the Christian Archon, I am expected to prepare my men to support this most holy cause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself. To all those who will take the fight against the vile infidels, desecrating the holy grounds of Jerusalem, the Holy See promises full absolution from all sins and a guaranteed place in heaven. We will, of course, prepare our men to go to war. And we will make... Hmm, We'll make our nephew our beneficiary. Sounds good, Scoby. Due to the earthquake, earthquakes in 1303 and 1323, the lighthouse finally collapsed. The most destructive earthquake is known to be the one in 1303 originated from the Greek island of Crete. That is really sad. I didn't realize it actually went around for that long. What's up, Gothenburg? Yes, I am not going to map paint. This is, a, this is a grand campaign, so I'm going to be going through all the Paradox games. If I just started painting the map... Which I could have by now. I could own, like, probably all of Spain and Italy if I wanted to. It'd just be kind of fucking boring. So, I'm taking things very slow. I'm just kind of role-playing it out. So. It is not the most exciting. If you want map painting, this is not the stream for you. Who doesn't love a good crusade? Probably the, the Muslims, I would guess. I, they probably don't enjoy it. In the newest U4 DLC, you can revive the Norse religion without a custom nation or use of consulate commands. It's called the Norwegian Mission Tree. Nice. The walls of Olbia. The delegation from Olbia slowly falls out of my private chambers, our long meeting finally over. The petitioners beg for money to repair the crumbling walls of the holding, and have invoked my lordly duty to help them. We've got the money for it. We'll pay for it. We'll, we'll go running. This is not enough, I think to myself, so I put down the trading axe. I've been practicing non-stop, but I'm not uh, getting tired. I need a tougher challenge. Something bigger or heavier. Are we inventing, like, dumbbells right now? Is that what is happening? We're, we can commission an FD, extra hefty trading axe. We can't afford it, but we want it, so we'll, we'll get it. Today in 2022, Egypt is, well, not a very good nation. Their cities are not what they used to be in ancient times. Egypt hasn't been in good condition since, man, probably thousands of years ago. Incompetence and colonization made them pretty pretty weak, unfortunately. Bit of both. The Vitalists have reformed. They're a Baltic faith. Interesting. Was that the, the Danes who did that? No, who was it? Oh, Estonia! Whoa! 
That's a big Estonia. King Kukamil II has reformed his religion. Baltic pagan religion's been reformed. That's pretty wild. I haven't seen that before. Huh. Interesting. Egypt being the door to Africa from the Middle East has not helped Egypt. No, because they've just been taken advantage of in modern terms. You know. Alright, how long until this crusade? Six months. We'll be getting our troops ready to go to, to combat. For all the authority I supposedly will as Archon, I cannot be everywhere in my realm at once. There will always be those who forget to obey my orders once my attention is turned elsewhere. This is where my vassal Judisa Natalia could come in, who has been faithfully enforcing my decrees within her own domain. Could she serve as my right-hand woman and take more of an active role in administering my well realm? Sure, we could use it. She's our daughter, isn't she? No, she's not. Huh. Sure. We have a right hand, which gives us control growth. The current government is also very corrupt. Oh, extremely. LCC is a, a corrupt dictator. In everything other than name. I mean, they thought that building a four-lane highway through the Giza Plateau would uh, be a good idea for tourism. It's not the most competent administration, that's for sure. The Mongol invasion has been buffed, so eager to see how it goes in this campaign. Yes. Yep. It's going to be... It's it's coming. I did turn it on this campaign, so that it is going to come. The Seljuks... They'll have to fight the Seljuks, though, because they're ridiculously strong. I mean, we are about to go on a crusade, Coco, so it does fit. We'll go on a hunt before we go on the crusade. God damn it! Right when I went on a hunt. Alright. Hold on. I gotta I got play the crusading music. Where is it? There's a soundtrack I always play when we go to on crusades. It's really good. There it is. This is the crusading the crusading song. Call the banners. We go to the Holy Land. <laughs> we killed a white boar and uh, sent it to Pope Sylvester. Perfect. All right. We're going to wait till we're back from the hunt and then we're going to lead our men personally. It is time. We have studied books on strategy since as young as we can remember. Also, where is this crusade? For Jerusalem. Yeah, it's very. Right. It is finally time that we back this up. That is a very big papal army. We have a, we have double their troops right now. In theory, we should win this crusade, but should and Crusader King's Crusades don't tend to correlate very well. We're going straight for Acre. Acre? Acre? I'm going to attach to the army of Rome. That definitely didn't cause any problems last time we did it. Aha! We have become a crusader. Our armies stand poised to take the crusade for Jerusalem. St. George willing, we will soon rise victorious. The blood of the heathens painting the soil red. The Pope can't decide what to siege out here. That's a bit of a problem. You know what? He's too indecisive. We're gonna go straight for Jerusalem. Fuck it. Oh no. Are we not getting back up? We're not getting back up. We need to run. Here we go! For God! For Christendom and for Jerusalem. Oh man, an absolute fucking slaughter. 
We broke their armies in Urbid. 47% war score. Alright, we're gonna go straight for Jerusalem again. And if we can take the Holy City, we will come home an absolute iconic figure of the Christian faith. Here they come. They're going past us. There's a great battle happening up there. We're going to hold the siege. We need to take for Jerusalem. They'll win that without us. It looks like we might actually win this crusade. We're number one right now. This might end the war. Ooh, we seized the height of the fabled Fox of Pharaoh. We got an artifact from Jerusalem. It's a court artifact. It's not a fantastic one, but we did win it in a crusade, so that's pretty fucking cool. Alright, we got another battle. They're going to try and siege out Jerusalem again. Here we go. Let's get in there. Overwhelmed yet again. That should be the war. No, it's actually not. We'll finish the siege. Oh no. Death is everywhere. It happens to everyone. We cannot avoid it. I find myself pondering the profound matter today for reasons I am unsure of. I am not pondering death in general, that is, but rather as it pertains to myself and my own fate. If and when I die in the future, what will it be like? How would it happen? Would it be peaceful or painful? Sooner or later? How would it even feel? Alright, we're having an existential crisis over our own death. Considering we've just fought in some major battles in the Crusades, I suppose that's only natural, but... Oof. Here they come. One last battle. Here we go! We have repulsed the heathen. Yet again! They fall to the might of Krishnam. No equal. the truck and we are in a crusade right now we're leading our army in the crusades to take back jerusalem and it's going very well we have personally sieged out jerusalem of our own army and we have slaughtered the heathen more times than we can count we're gonna our nephew will get it if we win this i believe yeah he's number one do we want to make sure who do we want to give it to let's give it to our grandson he's a knight Castor de Torres, he's our grandson. Is he our... Hold on. Is he our heir, though? No, he's our heir. We don't want him to get it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it to him. Amadora. Our nephew. Something I have never understood is why ancient architecture all over the world is so much more appeasing and nicer to look at than modern buildings such as housing, apartments, like why we don't build up stuff anymore. Because in the past, they didn't define their architecture, their building, and their general principles off of profit and capitalism. Not that, not to sound like a broken record, but capitalism makes things pretty ugly, you know. Because it's all about cutting costs and maximizing uh, output and profit margins. So unless you are really rich and commission a really nice building, it's not going to be very pretty. A bastard as a beneficiary. A ninja, I believe he's our nephew. Is he a bastard? He is a bastard, yeah. He's got our house name, though. That's what matters. He's of House Taurus. That's all we care about. We're a sodomite. Our wife's a cannibal. Being a bastard is not one of the, the worst things our family's been doing lately. You know, just saying. We can live with it. Alright, the seat should end the war, I think. 
Here we go. That's the war. We're at 100%. We'll not accept 100%? There it is! Aha! St. George has granted King Amadora, our nephew and friend, victory in the Crusade for Jerusalem. After defeating Caliph Abram and his heathen warriors on several occasions, our warriors forced the enemies of the faith to admit their ignominious defeat. With the occupied lands firmly under the leadership of a pious Catholic ruler, we can rest assured that the divine will of St. George has been enacted. This is a glorious day for all true followers of the cross. So, we have a crusader king of our own dynasty. That's our nephew. House Torres will rule in Jerusalem. Fan-fucking-tastic. With the establishment of a proper Catholic king in Jerusalem, the faithful can finally rest easy, knowing that St. George is smiling upon our good works. The fact that the new ruler of Jerusalem de uh, belongs to my dynasty is only further proof of our divine favor. We're not going to play as him, but yeah, cool. Wonderful. Just got here that I understand and accept. Absolutely. Sweet home Sardinia. You know, that's the one... We've done a lot of horrible things already, but actually, incest is not one of them. So we're, we're looking pretty good. Wonderful. Wonderful. We return home to Sardinia. Victorious and filled with the fire of God in our heart. Hopefully the new Holy Kingdom doesn't get instantly conquered by the Celtics or something. Yeah, well. We did the concrete part. That's up to him. We're also gallant now, by the way. We're going to go for Overseer. We're getting pretty old. We are 63 now. We just finished fighting successfully a Crusade. We're in pretty good shape. His army is not big. If the Seljuks decide they want Jerusalem, it's all over. Or the Byzantines, honestly. He is uh, not in the best of shapes here. He was crowned by the Pope before they went home, too. Wow. If you agree with Putin's logic, then you will agree with Carly and Murmanska rightfully finish. I'd rather live in a long house in the Viking Age instead of that's something that's over half a million dollars to build. That's what I mean. Things that last longer and stand the test of time with medieval methods. We could make our cities look like wonders, yet many look like blocks of square apartments. True. That's why I like many older European cities that stole most of their old buildings. You know, a lot of modern cities are so fucking ugly, man. We got a lot of gold from that war, too. 1,489 gold now. We are wealthy beyond belief. We are illustrious. We are a devoted servant. We are a very famous house. Recent times have done much to put House Taurus into a prominent position in all of Europe and all of Christendom. We will start by upgrading our trade port. We will upgrade the pastures in Galura. We will upgrade the fields of Aborea, and then to honor our great victory in the Holy Land, we are going to commission a great temple to be built in Sassari, or to the south of Sassari, to honor the struggles of the Sardinian people in the Crusade. And we still have money left over too. Wow. Oh, right after he commissioned that temple too. Archon Castor of Sardinia has found peace and Christ embraced at 64 years of age. He died of old age, a zealous man. He fought for the glory of God against the heathen in one of the greatest holy wars in recent history. He personally sieged at Jerusalem, too. Archon Alexander ascends to the throne, spending long hours in prayer as to not upset God. Many are confident that Alexander's reign will be a blessing to the realm. What a fucking Giga Chad. Our father, Castoro, literally won a crusade, sieged at Jerusalem, came home, Upgraded all the, the holdings that he had and commissioned the temple and then just died. Honestly, that's a pretty fucking good way to go, to be honest. Like, goddamn. What a legend. What a legend. He was a renowned sodomite, but that doesn't diminish at all from his achievements. I guess that we are going to be... A steward? We're a thrifty clerk. Alright, so Archon Alexander is now in charge. He fought in the crusade with his father and became a crusader, fighting in the Holy Land. He's intelligent. 
He does have gout, which is unfortunate. He's an architect, a novice steward, as he did spend much time as the steward of uh, Sardinia. He's temperate, he's zealous, and he's impatient. He has fantastic stats. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to make him... Uh, we'll, we'll go with uh, duty focus. New York uh, looked nice in its own way, but I can't think of a modern city, which is a modern wonder. Vegas is pretty cool looking. He might have pegged a few young men and fed uh, them to his wife, but we can look past it. Listen, he, he, he did some things that weren't what we would probably consider very Christian. But on the other hand, he's an absolute legend who conquered Jerusalem for Christ. So, honestly, I think that'd be, it'd all be forgiven, you know. We, we, we can look back past his, his little, you know, his little, his little problems. We'll put all of our vassals into positions of power. Oh my god, our our sister, or no, our mother, Margot, she has got 23 intrigue. We're going to make her a spy master. I'm 100% sure that unchecked capitalism is going to cause a crisis in the future. It already has, it's just like not fully being a felt yet. Yeah, exactly, it's, going. it's already in the process. A European wonder anyway. Oh, I don't know about that. How many rulers have you gone through so far? This is our fourth, I think. We've got Alessandro... We had Castoro, before him we had Galu, and before him uh, we had Andrea. So we're, we're on our fourth leader right now. We've gone through four generations of leadership so far. Our son and heir is Castoro. He is deceitful, cynical, and calm. He's a tough soldier and a crusader. Not particularly competent, if we're being honest. Uh, we need to find him a good wife. Jesus Christ. A bleeder with powerful lungs. Wow. Agnes Vigarisha. She's chaste, fickle, and arrogant, but she's silver tongued and has a good hearing. Uh, sure. We'll marry our son to her. Zach, if you could go back and see three ancient cities, which would they be? Ooh. Mm. The Height of Babylon, number one. My god. I would, I would, I would kill some people and do some pretty horrible things to see ancient Babylon, not gonna lie. I'd, I'd, I'd do some horrible things to see that. Um, Babylon, number one. I'd say probably Rome during the height of the Roman Empire. So probably during like, I'd say Rome during Marcus Aurelius, during the reign of Marcus Aurelius. That'd be number two. Uh, number three would probably be, ooh, that's tough. Constantinople at the height of the Byzantine Empire. That'd be my three. So Babylon, uh, what was the f second one I just said? Babylon, Rome, and uh, Byzantium, and slash Constantinople during their heights. Block them in the board. Final answers. What about you, Samurai? Which ones would you see? What happened to the grandson? Which one? Our grandson? That's him. That's Castorum. He was our grandson, but we died, so now he's just our son. Surround Scoby. Himmler had an odd fascination with Finland and Karelia. Uh, parts of his theories about the ancient German race, he concluded the Finns were Germanic in 35. Uh, they organized to do research to the ancient Germans. Most of the research was held in ethnic Finnish regions. Hitler was disappointed with them not finding any proof about the ancient Germans ruling Europe as his theories went, so they stopped operations around 42. The Nazis were into some weird shit, man. Like, belief-wise. Alright, our son is getting married. We will foot the bill of that. Cool. They had, a, I guess, a good marriage. We are going to conquer Corsica. We can form a kingdom. And the ambition of our past leaders have not been enough to get us where we need to be. As an impatient man, we are going to be looking to form the kingdom of Sardinia. And to do that, we will need to defeat the Archon of Corsica, Andrea. Who is gluttonous and shy. Things that we would not respect. 
So as soon as the uh, the marriage of our son is completed, we're gonna plan for it. Also, we need to we need to find some better clothing. I don't know who is dressing this man. Probably himself, based on the, the low quality. Let's go with some Byzantine Byzantine customs clothing. Let's also find it posed. It doesn't make him look like an absolute douchebag. Also pretty douchey. Not gonna lie. Also, even more douchey. There we go. Let's find an actually good crown. We're not arrogant, so I won't go with that. We'll go with a very simple circlet. There we go. Ancient Egypt at the height of its glory before it was conquered by outsiders. Fair. What are the other two samurai? Or that's Zodi, never mind. I'm not paying attention. I'm distracted. Alright, the wedding has ended. Hopefully they have a, a loving marriage. Alright, I did a poll to see if we would have a loving marriage with our wife. Our wife is our lover. If we can successfully romance her... We'll, we'll end that prediction. We're gonna write her a love poem. She didn't. She didn't like that. That's not good. In Corellia, Himmler met many travelers that they were called. Uh, he wrote stories about Calavella, and because Himmler was a fan of neo-paganism, he met many neo-pagans in the area. Uh, well, it's not many, uh, part of classical antiquity. I'd like to see Tenochtitlan at the height of the Aztec Empire. Stockholm at the time of Gustav Adolphus. Krakorum after Genghis Khan unified the Mongol tribes. Those are really good ones, Truck Nero. Those are all absolutely fascinating. It would be incredible to see. Yeah, Krakorum during Genghis Khan would have been wild. That would have been insane to see. My god. My voice is quiet. Is it? It says it's pretty loud for me. Um... Try turning up your volume. Is my voice really low for anyone else right now? Because I've got it on max right now. I could turn up the gain on it, but that'd be really loud. Volume is fine. All right, cool. Mic's good. Try turning up your volume, Garrett. That might help. All right, we have gout right now. We're going to try and get treatment from our court physician and friend. Nice. That'll help. And she has reduced the symptoms of gout. Wonderful. Carthage, yes. Carthage would be very cool to see. Alright. We, we, our gout's a little bit better right now. We're feeling a little bit better. We're gonna, we're gonna go hunting. While we plot our invasion of Corsica. I follow my quarry into the hill, slowly but surely gating him on the flighty lynx. Suddenly it spooks and bounds away, and as I move to see what it's scared, I can scarcely believe my eyes. Fabrizio, who is our, uh, my knight... And Mariana, my physician, uh, are, are, are doing the dirty. All right. Um, we know about her secret now. She's our friend and physician, so we wouldn't really probably care much. No, we would, because we're zealous and they're not married. So we would actually really dislike that. So we've lost a lot of respect for our physician. I keep forgetting that we're zealous. We actually have to roleplay a zealous leader now. We're very religious. Okay, I listen to multiple streamers at once, and they're all way louder, so I turn them down. That'll do it. That'll do it, Garrett. Sodom before it uh, was destroyed because of, well, sodomy. <laughs> you want to go see Sodom before it was destroyed so you can see sodomy. I, I, I don't want to blow your mind too much here, man, but you know you can see sodomy on the internet, right? It, it, there's, there's lots of it available on the internet. You don't have to go to Sodom to see sodomy. I don't want to blow your mind here, but yeah, I'm just going to throw that out there. It's free, too. Most of Spain would have been a sight to see as well. I remember watching a documentary where they found a trailer from England's journal and he said he thought he died and went to heaven. Really? Then again, medieval England was an absolute horrible place, so that's not saying much. But yes, that would have been very interesting too. My grandfather said he hated Nazis, but the more blonde and blue-eyed peeps were, the more he liked it. And the darker hair and eyed peeps had, the more suspicion he had towards them. Yeah, but to be fair, a lot of people from older generations have like a little bit of racism, let's be honest. 
Ancient Rome, Machu Picchu, Ancient Babylon, Tenochtitlan, Jerusalem, Ancient Alexandria, Ancient Jericho, Ancient Carthage. Those would all be absolutely incredible to see. Internet was not yet destroyed, my good man. Uh, I had to... I had to be hard there, man. You want to go to the source. I, I, I can respect that. Sweet Lady Theodosia. I saw you as a kneel before her. Are we a fucking simp? This sounds like simp talk right now. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. This man is a fucking simp. Uh, pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Theodosia gives me a long look. Lady Natalia's necklace is lovely, she says, and nods her head in the direction of my vassal. Uh, but it would look even better around my neck. Our wife has an STD. Can we divorce her? She's not even- she's orthodox. Well, let's make sure she converts to Catholicism. We can't be screwing a heathen. We're zealous. Also, Athens at its height, man. That would be a bit of sight to see. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. When, when Athens ruled, like, a lot of uh, Greece, that would have been fascinating to see. We'll upgrade the trade port yet again in Cesare. Our son can marry. He is our second son, I believe. They go to follow Nino. 2398. Yes, he's our second son. Simone de Torres. He is 17. He is temperate, just, and greedy. And a thrifty clerk. He's got a stewardship of 12, but beyond that, he's really not too competent. He is in need of a wife. So let us find someone very uh, prominent and prestigious for him to marry. Who doesn't have uh, just noticeable deformities. That may be tough to find, it appears. This is Europe we're talking about. God damn. The Princess of Sweden. She's a good Catholic. Look what we found. The Habsburgs! Oda von Habsburg! Alright, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna marry into the Habsburg family. What can go wrong? My uh oh man. Um I really want to do the DNA test and figure my ancestry because I don't know who my great grandpa is. I've seen pictures but I don't know his name. Yeah, you can get one, man. They're not too expensive. I've been reading some books on historical people recently. I was to the bookstore a few weeks ago and picked up a book on Genghis Khan, and today I picked up a book on Eric the Fourteenth of Sweden. Oh, that's interesting. Historical books about historical figures are really interesting, man. That's what I pretty much only read in my late teens and early twenties. I don't do it so much now, but they're absolutely fascinating. My grandfather let grandkids that are blonde inherit him, and brown hair didn't get shit. That's very racist. That's that's pretty racist. Also, I previously read a book on Gustav uh, Adolphus. Did I receive from my aunt? Nice. Yeah, it's a little bit different in terms of, like, preference note. Like, in terms of giving, like, certain kids, like, inheritance based on, you know, hair color and shit. That's a little bit different. They rule a city in Switzerland right now. I wonder if they expand it out. Let's take a look. We can, we can find out right now. We're going to host their wedding because my son is obviously not landed and can't afford it. House Habsburg is massive. They have a hundred living members and they have seven sub-houses right now. The head is Count Walther of Ar Argau. Yeah, so he, he owns territory still in Switzerland, it looks like. Not very powerful, but a very good administer. administrator. Am I winning? I, I suppose we've conquered all of Sardinia. I'm not in a rush. Like I said, I, I could easily map paint right now, but where the fuck's the fun in that? Let's upgrade the walls of Galura. Yeah, the, that wasn't Gustav Adolphus. Oh, my bad. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom again. I've been uh, hydrating a little bit.
Gustav IV Adolf was not Gustav Adolphus. Gustav II Adolf was Gustav Adolphus. The fourth was the king who fought against Napoleon and then lost Finland to Russia. Ah, I gotcha. Didn't he get replaced too? Because didn't one of Napoleon's uh, generals become the, the king of Sweden? They start off usually with one father and mother and two daughters, and the father's pretty decent steward. I always wanted to play them uh, before they became as powerful as they ultimately did. They tried sometimes to conquer and would become Switzerland, but were pe repelled every time. Ah, I got you, Zodi. He, he did. Okay, I thought so, yeah. What was his name? He, he was like the cavalry general for Napoleon, and they liked him so much they literally just made him king of Sweden. I know they lasted for a while, too. Yes, Bernadotte. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. Sweet Lady Theodosia. I saw her as Neil before her. We're such a fucking simp. This is embarrassing. Why only desires to bring you happiness? Um, She wants this woman's necklace as well. Why is this woman just coveting everyone's necklace? There we go. He was overthrown and exiled, and his son blocked it from inheriting Gustav the Force's uncle. Carl became Carl the 13th. But he was too old and had no living children. Ah, I gotcha. That is interesting, though. Why can we imprison Ode von Habsburg? What has she been doing? She's a known criminal. Oh, she's an adulterer. She's been cheating on our son. That's unfortunate. Fucking Habsburgs, man. Our army's gotten pretty big. All right, around 2,300 soldiers now. When the raised voices reached me yet again, I quenched my instinct to turn on my heel. The constant bickering of my vassal Jedi, Galu, and my knight, Abdul Halim, is enough to drive any man mad. Something must be done. I could either treat the situation as an exercise in mediation, or eavesdrop and approach one of them with my sympathies afterwards. We'll try and get them to calm down. And it succeeded, nice. Wonderful. Our wife is pregnant. So they chose to adopt someone. First, a Danish guy called Christian August, who packed up the name Carl August, but then he fell off his horse and died. Nice. So then they chose John Baptiste Bernadotte because he was a good military man, friends with Napoleon, wealthy, and also liked uh, by the Swedish nobility. He practically started ruling when he arrived in Sweden, but didn't become king until 1818, and he became King Jarl the 14th Johan. Bernadotte ended up betraying Napoleon. Yes, I know that one. He was not a loyal fellow. I sit on a mug of invigorating herbal infusions, eyes scanning over my latest scrawled work. Conflict and wrath. Where other men speak silvered words, our hero himself in iron girds. His subjects prove grateful, for if they do not, their next to the door is his sort broad. Truly I am the greatest artistic mind of my age. Apparently we're a poet. I wouldn't personally call that poetry, but apparently we're a poet now, so that's good. We're not very good at it, though. Yeah, he still rules Sweden to this day. Yep, I thought so. I imagine who would be on the throne of Russia if Russia fell to France. Tough to say, honestly. Alright. Did we... Yes! Aha! We successfully seduced our wife. It is possible. All right, that prediction is going to be called then. Three people have have lost it. No one said yes. No one said yes that we would actually have a a a, a good marriage, but we did. So y'all were proved wrong. That's hilarious. We actually ended up having a loving marriage with the with Theodosia. Please post an instruction on how I can also seduce my wife. Listen, the key is to be a simp and write her lots of poetry. That, that's all you gotta do, according to Crusader Kings 3. So, that'd be my advice. And we had we had twins, too. We had Alessandro and Guiana. Interesting name. We're gonna give him a learning focus. Uh, you know, I think Russia would have fallen to France if they would have done more to spread out the front line and not just push for Moscow. Sure. It'd be funny if your character would end up getting the nickname The Simp. That would be hilarious. 
the alcohol not physically being a being a whiny bitch. All right, I think it is time that we prepare a war for Corsica. Let's go talk to our bishop, Soluri, and see if we can get a claim upon Corsica. We'll upgrade those hill farms as well. take Corsica we can stop Napoleon from ever happening so yay or we become Napoleon what's in cloth crow's feathers a strange smelling concoctions this is evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Galera that proof that Fabrizio has been practicing sorcery in his hut in the outskirts of the village we are zealous so we're gonna burn him alive as you do then we take Austria and stop uh, Hitler from happening We've got very loyal vassals. All of our vassals are in the loyalist faction. That's really cool. Are you going to take this campaign to Stellaris? Yes. I thought we saved burning at the stake for the witches. He was a witch. He was just a, he was a male witch. Yeah, well, he was called a sorcerer, I think, actually. Well, so it's the feast. Man, look at those stats. That's so good. The pleading gaze I received from my cousin Marianne, who is taking up a desperate tone. At every fucking feast this dude comes to, he ends up, like, hating it, because he's fucking shy. But he always comes anyway. So we'll help him out. We do like him. We are going to get a tax return from the Pope. We are going to demand money from uh, Marianu. We'll repair our lantern with that money, which apparently costs 38 gold. He was playing as the Petty King of Brittany and then formed the proper Kingdom of Brittany. He's shy, but he would have to be fucking uh, stupid to deny food. Fair. Man, France is in shambles right now. Tuscany is still independent. Is this still of Matilda's line? I think so. They just like made a different one. The papacy has taken all of the coastline in Italy, though. Piedmont was conquered by the Pope. He is very fucking strong now. Wow. Yes, they do. It's a very strong Pope. Independent Urbino. We'll upgrade the keep in Galura next. Yes, they have. They are very long. Long and windy. Yeah, they're snaking. The Pope seems to think that this is Stellaris for some reason, because he's snaking. Very odd. Very odd. I wonder how this will work in Victoria 3. How what will work, Note. Role playing in Victoria 3 in the Grand Campaign will be easy. I am going to wait for the converter, though, so we, we might have to put this on hold for a little bit, depending on how long it will take to get a an EU4 to Victoria uh, 3 converter. So we'll have to, we might have to wait a little while. We'll see. Oh, 
Ooh, Sicily just split into a hundred little pieces. Calabria formed, Apula formed, and then the remnants of Sicily are still under the king. Italy is a pretty chaotic place, isn't it? How's it going? Has been has been a cause? Oh, 13? Yes, they did. They did. They just minged. Split into a hundred little pieces. We are now 50. We've gotten pretty old. Our son is also in a drill true. That's a shame. We have so many fucking kids. How many people are of our dynasty? 43 living members, 6 houses. Uh, just Haas is good. How's it going, Haas? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm really enjoying the second session of this grand campaign. How about you? Well, you already said you're fine, so I know the answer to that. But yeah, it's going pretty good. We are about to launch an invasion of Corsica so we can form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Before we invade... Hold on. Yeah, we can win it. Before we invade, we are going to send a poem to him about his incompetence. We humiliated him. Good. We, we sent him a humiliating poem, and now we're going to invade. You see, Archon Alessandro likes to send battle poems to his enemies before he defeats them. It's a good way to wage, wage war, to be honest. We will get our brother to lead our forces as well. Papacy did its thing and took some of Naples area after the Sicilian explosion. Oh my god, yes they did. That is a very scary papacy. Pope Leo X is very strong. How are you trying to form Rome or another empire? I'm not... Uh, Haas, I, I haven't really decided what I want to do. I like to roleplay out these games, so like, we kind of just let it go where things go. We're going to look probably form the Kingdom of Sardinia. That's the ambition of Archon Alessandro. He would like to form the Kingdom of Sardinia. After that, we have no plans, frankly. Battle poems and the battle pope to things to deadly for war. I have an idea. How about you naming your children? You start a prediction and basically the highest bidder gets to name the child. Could do that. Oh, shit. Crashing, man. Thank you for the gifted subs. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. When haircut. Never. My luscious locks shall not be cut. Not by any mortal hand. But thank you, man. That's really nice of you. Thank you, crashing. You've done that before, too. So I really appreciate it, man. God damn. We're gonna get treated for gout. Good. It's been dealt with. Alright. We have defeated their armies. We're gonna go and rout their men before we finish the siege of Corsica here. Should be easy. Archon Andre has many things, but he is not a very competent commander. That is for certain. Our brother is Galu. Let's finish the siege. Thank you for the follow, Garrett, and thank you for the follow, Has. Appreciate that. Does not know uh, how. Does not now need to go to work tomorrow. Today. <laughs> Wait, you should claim the Mediterranean. Perhaps, if we get really fucking ambitious and arrogant, perhaps. And we captured Archon Andrea in combat. He tried to push us off the siege, and in the end, he found us uh, himself in our dungeons. So we will end this war. We have taken Corsica for ourselves. Where am I from? I'm from the U.S. I'm originally from a state called Idaho, which is in the middle of nowhere, but I live in Ohio. So, how about you, man? Where are you from? If you become poor, you will look as you were there for years. What does that mean, Seal? What do you mean by that, Nathan? You like the flag behind me? Are oh, you from Romania? Hell yeah. Yeah, that flag is the Venetian flag. I got it when I was in Venice. I really like it, so I've got it up. I've also got a Scottish flag you can't see. So I'm in Ohio. I feel bad for you. I feel bad for me too. I do really like living with my aunt, though. I don't. I don't love Ohio. I do like who I'm living with. So we'll bring some order to Corsica after annexing it. And can we? I don't think we can form the duchy. We're probably going to need uh, one more province. Yep. If we get one more province, we will be able to form the Duchy of Corsica, and then we could form the Kingdom of Sardinia. So we are going to have to wait, and then in the future, we're going to start one last war of Archon Andrea and take everything from him and his family. So we'll wait for that. I know, is it in the middle of nowhere? At least it's only one state over from me. It is in the middle of nowhere, Scobie. There's not much out there, to be honest, man. Montana's pretty empty, too. 
Chicago is in Ohio, or am I mistaken? Chicago is in Illinois. So that's two states over to the west from where I'm at. I know it does have a fun capital, though, Boise. I just find it fun to say. Yeah, it is, it is an interesting word, Boise. Sweden is just the worst Denmark. How about when the UK collapses, you shall have the Scottish flag in the background. Sure. I only realized recently, but the one of the first three guys, Michael Collins, has the same name as the guy from Ireland who made the IRA, Michael Collins. I, I don't know enough about Irish politics to comment on that. More damned weddings. We'll upgrade the... We'll upgrade the hill forts. We'll, we'll build ditches around our capital. Again, there is always the chance of raids from the Muslims, so we have to be ready for it. We're befriending our nephew. Nice. We'll build a trade port in Ayasio? Ayasio? I don't know how to say that. It's my best attempt. We aren't even Vikings because we are Finnish and we have a culture of our own. Our wife is pregnant again. Good. Michael Collins is one of the three guys on the moon and the guy who made the IRA have the same name. Hmm. Alright, good time to go hunting, I think. After that war, we need to de-stress. The best way to de-stress is by killing wild animals. So we're going to go do that. Poachers! Here in the Jedi's woods. They huddle together as I ride up with my guards, making a poor job of hiding the dead heart behind them. Let's see, we are impatient, zealous, and temperate. We wouldn't murder because we're zealous and we're temperate, so we're gonna we're gonna offer to make them bowmen. Good time to go hunting dies immediately. Hopefully not. We have a pretty interesting ruler. I'd rather see him not die. Alessandra's been pretty interesting so far. Found our recent me and Eminon have the same birthday as David Attenborough. Nice. Alessandra doesn't end up like William II of England and dies in a hunting accident. Or like any good ruler in EU4, to be honest. There are a lot of them. We're zealous, and we have never been on a pilgrimage. So are we going to save up to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem as soon as we're, we have the money for it? Jerusalem is still alive. Our cousin, uh, Amadora, does still control Jerusalem. He's lost most of his land, though, unfortunately. A bastard founder. That's interesting. So we, we are going to head to Jerusalem. Uh, and it is still owned by the Christians. Just barely, though. He's just barely holding out, out against the Fatmans. E4, you can die as a general leading your men on the battlefield. How a real leader should rule. True. I used to support Hungary over Romania, but now after the EU declaration of Hungary not being democratic and supporting Russia, I officially support Romania in the Hungary-Romanian rivalry. I mean, Hungary's not a democracy. Orban is a strongman dictator. That's what he is. Tradesa Natalia's inherited contract obliges her to more than you have collected. Mm, let's raise her taxes then. We have pretty good income, but it's not crazy, so we could definitely do it with some more. We can uh, we can uh, imprison our daughter-in-law due to her cheating on our son, but we're not going to do it. I only know this because I got bored and looked at my birthday. Nice. Yeah, Hungary should be kicked out of the EU. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. I feel bad for the people there, but they're not getting out of Orban's rule, so... All right, let's see if we can go on a pilgrimage. To Jerusalem! We're a holy man. We're very zealous. We take our devotion to Christ very seriously. So at 52, having never gone on a pilgrimage, I think it would be important for us to go to Jerusalem. We were there before. We actually sieged out Jerusalem. Alessandro was there when the armies of his father and his cousin sieged out the holy city. But he's never traveled there as a pilgrim, only as a conqueror. So he's going to get to see the holy city as a pilgrim this time. They voted so they deserve it. Yeah, it has, but a lot of people there didn't vote for it. They're just kind of stuck there, unfortunately. So I do feel really bad for those people. 
We've lost our companions, but we're a holy man, and we know that God will protect us, so we don't mind. Let's try and treat our gout again. Never mind, it's going to cost us money. We can't afford that. No other city in the world has a history quite like Jerusalem. In addition to the many holy sites there, the city contains the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, built over the combined places where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Standing outside of the Temple Mount with my hand on the western wall, I find myself reflecting on everything that happened on my journey to the city of legend. I have walked the holy path. Wonderful. We have shown our devotion to the Lord. And apparently we're going to get paid for it. Nice. We will use that to build stockades around Cesaria. Cesaria, rather. I especially feel bad for LGBT Hungarians as they are increasingly discriminated under Orban's rule. Yeah, that really does suck. In the heart of Europe, too, which is so fucking sad. I mean, that's the thing, though. Is if you're a strongman dictator, you need to blame problems on someone. And the LGBTQ community is always an easy mark. Abu, as you are an American, you are the greatest nation in the world. First I've heard of it. Which means you are very educated. That's absolutely not true. So I need your opinion. If Finland should own all of Europe, and as we have a rightful claim to all of Europe, I can explain the claims to Europe if you wish. I'm good, and I'm going to say no. Um, the only people that have a claim on Europe is the heirs of Napoleon. Change my mind. Basically, every nation in Russia's sphere or the CSTO is taking the opportunity of a weak Russia to settle old grudges. Yes, they are. Russia's falling apart right now. I currently have a blind steward with 25 stewardship. He has to read everything by hand. He is just using early Braille Turk. It's fine. It's fine. There's been a smallpox outbreak, apparently. That's not good. That is not good at all. And we have built that temple. It did finish. We have a hypercalculic bishop. Another child, Simone. Simeon? We've got a lot of grandkids at this point. I, I've lost count of how many we have. We're not a patriarch, so we don't have to give a shit. You keep spelling Norwegian or Swedish wrong. Come on, we as the Nordic people should unite in these times, not bicker over each other. That is true. You really should. What's up, Bert? How's it going, man? Alessandra is getting very old. How long until we can invade Corsica? Can we request a claim? No, we cannot. We'll need to find our bishop, Augustino, and get him to get us a claim on southern Corsica. Going for multiple beard shaves here. Hopefully not. I think we all learned last time I shaved my beard that it's definitely not a good look. So, probably not a good idea. Yep, court physician is, 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 is dead, and we need a physician, and we don't have one, so we're going to search for a physician twice. I want to see if I can do that. Bastard found her, but she doesn't have a dynasty. Nope, they're all very incompetent. They're also all very incompetent. Goddamn. Well, snap, when did the Sardinian kingdom form? We haven't formed a kingdom. We have the Duchy of Sardinia. We're trying to form the kingdom, but to do so, we need to push out the Gunala dynasty from Corsica. Any ideas on the gathering mechanics work? Sometimes I have to wait a year for my army to spawn. You mean your troops? You need a rally point where the enemy is not sieging. That's the main thing. We cannot let the world suffer from the loss of his amazing beard again, so do not save him. Hot tub stream is still on the table. That is true. And I and I've been going back to the gym, so it, it won't be a it won't be a horrible experience, I promise. We are really not getting competent core physicians, are we?
You know what we don't have right now? That all of our dynasty members have had a cape. Our family always wears capes, and we haven't, which is bringing dishonor to our house. We should be getting negative prestige for that, honestly. How about making the kingdom of sea people and just raid everything? Well, we we probably only go a pirate republic in EU4, so actually, yes. How about you are witnessing an argument between two euros? Well, actually, one euro and a krona. Yes, we are, we are probably going to go pirate republic. We'll see. Or pirate... Monarchy, I guess. That'll be interesting in the U4. We got a little bit, though. We still got around, let's see, 70, 270 years to go in, uh, in CK3 before we transition to U4. So we got a ways. Long ways. We'll make our air spy master. He can use some experience. We're going to send him to the Vatican to try and find the Pope's dirty secrets. So we can blackmail the Pope. No, wait. Hold on. We're zealous. We wouldn't do that. God damn it. <sighs> Having to be zealous and play by the rules. God damn it. Situation in Finland. Irrelevant? Still Sweden and big Karelia. Let's look around the world a little bit. The Isles have gotten massive. They're really powerful. And that's Gaelic culture. Interesting. England's in a civil war. Shockingly, the Duchess of York is revolting. Who would have expected someone from York revolting against the monarchy of England? I've never heard of that happening in my life. So weird. Toledo has gotten massive. Galicia has gotten very strong. The Pope is huge. The Seljuks are massive, of course. Big Poland, big Lithuania, big Vladimir, big Ruthenia. Norway is united. Big Bohemia and the HRE. Huge Angria as well, that's interesting. Bavaria, Province Savoy. And then we have a huge united Hungary right now, which is really interesting. King Thomas of Hungary. Big Moldavia. Whoa. Look at that. How are the sheep shaggers and drunkards doing on the isles? Apparently very well, Scoby. I'm glad the Azerbaijanis are kicking the Armenians out. That's a very big Poland as well. Byzantium's still holding on. They've lost quite a lot of territory, but they are holding on right now. Including to actually a bit of the coastline, which is surprising. Jerusalem is still alive, barely. What about India? Huge Paula, huge Ramapolid. And Genghis Khan has not showed up yet, so. Yep. That's the state of the map right now. Well, we're just kind of hanging out in Sardinia. What's up, Tajit? Grand Campaign is going very well. What's up, Canadian? Good to see you. The current generation of young men from Ayastio have won fame for their bravery and strength while serving my armies and garrisons, defending the locals from bandits. Cool. Strong lads. That's my favorite bonus I've ever streamed. Where is it? Strong lads! The young men of this province have achieved some level of renown for their bravery and skill war. Nice. Someone tells me you have a king in a faraway land who was cruel yet fair in his dealings. Once he hired an engineer to create the largest labyrinth the world has ever seen. Those guilty of the worst crimes were put in this maze of tunnels and hallways, which were filled with all manner of violent beasts, as well as dangerous booby traps that could kill a man instantly. Almost none escaped. But there were always a few who had the wits and tenacity, or perhaps the luck and blessings of God, to find their way out. And the king granted freedom to those few for this impressive achievement. We're gonna get some dread out of that, I guess. Yo guys got any room for anyone in Iberia? This is a single player game, Canadian. I'm actually not playing a multiplayer game right now, as shocking as that is. Will you try us to do espionage to artificially push empires to the edge? Yes. As soon as we get a, uh, a Spy Master King or Spy Master Duke, we are absolutely going to do that. So, yes. Because the Seljuks and uh, some other folks need to be cut down to size here. Alright, as soon as the truce is done with uh, Archon Andrea, we are going to immediately start another war with him. 
which we will have uh, in nine months. And then we'll be able to form the Kingdom of Sardinia. So we're going to save up all of our gold for that. I realize my mistake now. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm sick at the moment. I can't really think straight. Oh, no, you're fine, Canadian. Hope you feel better, man. Just the flu, I hope. Nothing too bad. I mean, I support Azerbaijani as a nation, not their army. What army and soldier they captured? Oh, Jesus Christ. That is horrifying, Escova. I hope you bunch up a few clusters of tiny nations on conversion so that the map will be more interesting. I'm going to fracture some of these bigger countries and make them decentralized is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be very active with conversions and cutting big countries down to size, including us. If we are ever really big when we convert between games, I am going to cut us down a bit. So, yeah. Unless it's really interesting roleplay-wise. We're being blackmailed. I know of your unusual sexual proclivities. Wait, we have unusual sexual proclivities? First I'm hearing of it. We're heterosexual. We're not a deviant. Hold on. What are we doing? I, this is the first I've heard of it. My brother, the Jedi Galu, has revealed my secret to the world to see. My natural lust and uncontrollable desires are widely known and accepted as fact. Hold on. We've been a deviant this whole time and I didn't know it? Apparently, we're a sexual deviant. The first time hearing of it, but, um, yeah. It's probably because we've been fucking our wife not with missionary. That's, that's, that's pretty scandalous in these times, to be honest. Can you stream the conversion? It would be kind of interesting to watch, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. It's cold that pretty much uh, put me in bed for the last three to four days. Ah, oh, that sucks, man. But if it's only a cold, that's a good thing, considering that COVID is still out there. Thank you for the follow, Batty McBronze. Great name, man. Sounds like he lied. You only uh, just gained Deviant. Yeah, he did. I don't think we are a Deviant. But now we are? Huh. Well, we're, we're a Deviant now. Hostilities go back a long time between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Armenia made a deal with Russia only because it was the only option they had against their Turkish and Azerbaijani problems. Hmm. I should be thanking you. You taught me Millennium Dawn templates. Oh, nice. You saw my, uh, you saw my videos, Bronze. I'm about to have a new one out. I've got I've got a bunch more MD videos coming out in the next couple weeks with the update. I've got I'm gonna have a redone military tutorial. I'm gonna be putting out my naval tutorial I've been promising forever. I'm putting out a new division design and template video as well. So keep your eyes out for that. There is there's some new ones coming very soon. I've been working on that for the last two weeks. My god, the amount I've written for Millennium Dawn tutorials in the last week has been kind of crazy. I've got like twenty pages of text that are gonna be turned into some videos. Another dream whisked me away to a strange land where people dress in the most unsightly fashion. Their hair strung around like stones being tossed around, yet everyone seems to ignore me and go about their daily business without interruption. I walk some distance before I come to what appears to be a small tavern or establishment of some sort to meet the person I'm supposed to meet. As I enter, a voice calls to me. Fancy seeing you here of all places. It's my bishop. It's none other than Augustino. After I take my seat by a round table, we chat about this and that, and we sip a strange liquid from a ceramic cup. The drink is unlike anything I've had and quite paradoxical. It is both black and white in color and both sweet and bitter in taste. We're dreaming, right? Suddenly, I find myself back in my normal bed awake. I can't help but feel a sense of joy as I remember that dream nonetheless. When I discuss the dream later with Augustino, he confirms he shared the exact same dream. Whoa. That's wild. Damn. Um, have you got any CK3 tutorials? Funny you mentioned that. I'm actually working on a CK3 tutorial series. I'm going to rant about that for a minute, because you brought it up, and now you're going to hear me rant about it. So, I've been doing some thinking. Right now, my YouTube channel is pretty much entirely roleplay videos. I love to make them. They're a lot of fun, and I'm going to make a lot more of them, because uh, it is a roleplay channel. But I do want to get out some more tutorials. I, I was doing some research uh, the last couple of weeks on just, like, the tutorials that are actually out there for for the Paradox games. A lot of them are, are, have been made but almost all of them are either outdated or frankly not very good. So I decided as like a side project, I'm gonna start working on tutorials for most of the Paradox games. I'm gonna do my rework Millennium Dawn tutorials that I'm working on for the MD dev team right now. I have written pretty much entirely a Victoria 3 tutorial series 
So when Victoria 3 launches, expect in the first week me to have uh, a full Victoria 3 tutorial series out. I'm going to do one for politics, uh, military, and economics. They're already written. I just need to record them uh, and make sure I have the right information once that drops. And then I'm going to make an updated CK3 tutorial series. And then probably a Hoi 4 one. And then probably, maybe if I feel like it, an Ambit R1 if I get really into that. And then EU4. So, yes. CK3 tutorials are coming. Don't expect those probably before December. You're going to see new Millennium Dawn tutorials in the next two weeks. You will, uh, there will be a Victoria 3 tutorial series out as soon as that drops, and then I will be working on a CK3 one. So anyway, a full tutorial might, what might work better for C Victoria 3, yes. Um, the problem is, it's such a complex game, I tried to put them all into one tutorial. It would be around an hour long, um, which is pretty, pretty, pretty time consuming, and most people lose attention for videos after around 20 minutes. So I'm going to cut them into three individual ones like I did for Millennium Dawn. Uh, just because I think people will, will will keep their attention a little bit more, you know? So, yeah. Just dumb them down for me as much as possible. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's why I made the tutorials. Is like, a lot of Paradox games are very complex. But once you understand the mechanics, you can play them. So, what I try and do with the tutorials I make is make them simple. It, it just requires, you know, an understanding for the mechanics. People would rather watch one big more than three smaller ones, at least tutorial-wise. That's actually not true from what I've seen. People actually prefer more than one. A lot of people do, from what I've seen. If you look at like what does well and what doesn't do well. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So anyway, yes. There is an all right tutorial out right now. Uh, one Proud Bavarian is a, a fantastic YouTuber. He has a CK3 tutorial series out right now, which is very good. It's a little bit outdated, but it is fantastic. So if you want to learn CK3, I would recommend One Proud Bavarian. Great guy, does roleplay, great tutorials. Uh, they are out. They're not updated for the latest, but they're really good. So. Anyway, ran over. Point being, yes, they are coming, and I do have a lot more tutorials I'm actually planning on doing. Our, my kid got murdered. Fuck! Yes, he did. Castority Taurus is dead at 31. He had no children, he was an adulterer, he was a rakish, and he was a crusader. He had no kids. Our second son is actually going to inherit. He is very incompetent. Simeon de Taurus. He is temperate, just, and greedy. He is also flagellant, so he beats himself uh, to deal with his problems. Our grandson, Alessandro, I believe is being educated by us, isn't he? Yes. So we are, we are educating our grandson, which is good. Let's find some guardians for our other uh, children and grandchildren. Every family has that one weird person. Usually more than one, frankly, but yes. And if your family doesn't have a weird person, you are the weird person. So, enjoy that. Well, he's not... He's not a very good physician, so we're going to find another one. You know, I feel like a kind of doomer for the future. I don't want to live in a world like cyberpunk, honestly. Don't know if it's just the best metaphor if you get me. Yeah, the future doesn't look too great, but you can't let that define your life, you know. Still got to live it. Ah, oh, Marion is dead. All right, we no longer have a truce with Andrea, so we are going to go ahead and conquer the last of his territory. Hold on, but before we do... We have to send him a shit-talking poem. It's tradition. We don't declare war without sending a poem to them, talking crap. So, we sent him a poem about his own incompetence, and now we're going to conquer the last of his lands. Neither of them are good. You mean the second child of the family? Because uh, then I'm the weird one. Easily defeated in the mountains of Corsica. We'll finish the siege, and then we will form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Our ambition since we were a child. We're not the most ambitious man, but we do want to achieve some things in life. Oh no, our knight has an infected wound. And we don't have a physician. We have no one to treat him right now. Nope. Ready Player One was an alright movie. I watched it with my brother. We'll upgrade the barracks in our capital while we finish this siege. 
and we still have enough money left over. Actually, no, we shouldn't have done that. We need that money to make the second duchy and then the kingdom title, but it'll be fine. Probably. Yeah, it was, it was older now. I really liked the concept when it came out. I read the book, actually. There was a book that preceded that movie. That was all right. It was, it was okay. Just suicide charging our lines here. And the war is done. We will take everything from his family. Should mean that we can form the Duchy of Corsica. Yes, we can. And now all we need is 500 gold. And we can form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Almost a king. You should name one of your kids Kaiser sometime and uh, use him to conquer Italy. That would be interesting. It's pretty overcrowded, but there are uh, gardens and parks. Uh, not gonna lie, I feel like we're not far off from the VR tech they need uh, had in the movie. No, we're really not. VR is gonna be... VR is one of those things that a lot of people don't appreciate right now, but it's one of those things that as soon as the tech gets a little bit more advanced, as soon as the infrastructure is built, and as soon as the tech cost goes down a bit, we're all going to get very, very involved with VR very quickly, especially for gaming. I really do believe that. Like, there will come a time very soon where VR will be very involved in all of our lives, especially with gaming. So, I think most people don't understand how close we are to having, like, just VR in all of our games and how quickly it will probably take hold. I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. A king in all but name. Absolutely. Archon Alessandria should be a king. He simply laps the gold to make everyone respect him as a king, I suppose. 180 gold to go. Though as a guest, I'm not held to the monastic rules. I am expected to participate in daily tasks. Well before dawn, chicken bones, soggy root vegetables, and barley were boiled into a thin gruel as today's ingredients. Folks from nearby villages have become soup. This looks interesting, but I want to become a king, so... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna skip this. I'm a little bit impatient. It's fine. We're also impatient, so not an issue. Bureautech is getting huge upgrades. I remember seeing a things in China that gives you like those glasses that lets you see those boxes or whatever. Yeah, it's not far away. It's really not. Oh yeah, MMOs will come back um, really hard when VR hits. Uh, Roleplay is gonna be much bigger in gaming once VR hits too. Roleplay is not nearly at what it will be. In Paradox, in games in general, it will be way bigger when VR takes hold, I think. We've seen the beginnings of the rise of roleplay with things like, uh, you know, uh, like D&D becoming so popular, like Critical Role, and then like, you know, GTA roleplay and Red Dead roleplay. Roleplay will become way bigger once VR takes hold. It will be dominant in the gaming community, I think. I might be wrong, but that's kind of what I expect to have happen. We'll see. All right, 62 gold to go. We're close. We're going to hold off on uh, getting a court position so we can get the kingdom title a little bit quicker. I'm sure that won't cause any problems at all. Yeah, that'll be fine. The reason people don't use VR more today is because there's not using it that's made for at the moment. It's going to be getting one there and using it pretty much only flight and racing sims. It hasn't been incorporated into a lot of games yet, but once it once it is, it will take on very quickly, I think. Alright, we're close. 20 gold. That's two months. One month to go. Finally! After 109 years, House Torres, starting off as a very simple Jedi and Cesari, will found a kingdom, the kingdom of Sardinia. Wonderful. Ooh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That is incredible. We are now a mighty king. That is a really nice court. My gosh, look at that. We'll put up our banner. The Torres family banner on the wall. And then we'll put a, the crown of the, the height of the fabled fox right above it. That looks pretty cool. Not bad. Thank you for the follow, Inked Flower. And thank you for the follow, Leem321. 
I'm curious to see the development of trade goods once this is converted to U4. Yeah, absolutely, Tajit. There's a lot of mods that we can actually use with a converter, too. So I want to try and use as many mods as I can with all the different games that we try and play in the Grand Campaign, which I've never done before. When I've done Grand Campaigns in the past, I played with basically no mods, so this should be interesting. But yeah, we are finally a king. We have climbed very far since our humble beginnings. And we are now in very, very good shape. Good. Judea Natalia of Tortoli is coming to pay her respects to her new king. And we also got Avaricious. Wonderful. Alright, we we're going to get coronated right now. We, we have not had a coronation ceremony so far. So we're going to try and see if we can get the Pope. The greatest decision for a Catholic ruler such as I will be who exactly crowns me. Of course, the Pope would be truly illustrious, but they would no doubt ask for something in return. A priest could also be expensive, but would be in no position to demand quite so much. Well, of course, I can order any old bishop to do it, though I can imagine the whisperings of court even now. Alright, uh, are we friendly with the Pope? I have so many different things up right now. No, he doesn't like us at all. He's going to demand a lot of gold, but it's worth it. We're the first king of House Taurus. The Pope has responded to my request and has requested nothing, citing coronation chain error code. <laughs> they have stated that they will be making their way immediately for the coronation. He's going to do it for free. Probably because our family literally founded the kingdom of Jerusalem. So, wow, that's pretty cool. I just decided how much exactly I will spend on my coronation ceremony. The more I spend, the more prestigious and lavish the affair will be, and doubtless its effects on my coffers. Still, my vassals will expect a show of wealth. 1500. We're gonna we're gonna be very uh, we're we're gonna, we're gonna not spend a lot on it. It's a very humble ceremony oversawn by the Pope. He is very generous, no kidding. Why is the lamp sparkling so much? I'm not too sure. If time machines ever somehow become a thing, I'll tell about the fuck out of here real quick, because, bro, I don't want to live in a world where we have no jobs and become uh, par practically slaves. Well, yeah, it's kind of how it works. The past was much worse, I can promise you that. Apparently they do, Canadian. Alrighty, we're having a feast for the coronation. We're talking with Natalia. Uh, yeah, she's really cool. She's our friend as well. She's our steward, our and friend, and our vassal. Our family is definitely very good at like maintaining like good relations with our vassals. I'm so used to CK3 games being constantly like every generation you have to fight your vassals to be respected. But our family, for all their many problems, and there are a lot of them, we have done a very good job of actually keeping in the good graces of our vassals. Despite being like cannibals, sodomites, and deviants, we our vassals actually like us. So, The pleading gaze I received from my wife Theodosia is taking on a desperate tone. A group of guests are approaching the corner. She is hidden all evening. The walls are hindering her escape. We'll, we'll help her get out. She's shy, isn't she? Yes. It's fine. She doesn't need to be here. A humble ceremony. That might not be such a luxury, but it's the thought that counts. Exactly. The Pope's going to be there, so it's it's going to be prestigious. The Pope says the words, and so do I, and a sudden solemnity falls upon my gathered court. It feels so trivial in the moment as they approach and lay the crown upon my head, as if some words will truly make me a king. But still, I cannot deny the sudden rush that hits me as I rise before my people. While I enter today a man, I now leave a true king. None can doubt my right anymore. We've been crowned by the Pope. He's a really thick lad, goddamn. <laughs> he, he he promised to do this for free, but he is gonna eat us like all of our food supplies for the next year, so that's the cost, I suppose. Wonderful. Crowned by the Pope. I played as a funny mustache man in Prussia in this game. Nice. I read somewhere that a lot of crimes that happened before modern day were a lot of common cause. You could not get caught as much. Well, yeah, the police weren't as effective as they are now. And they're not effective now, so that's not saying much. I want to go back in time and crush British schools in. What happened with that one woman who won a tournament during the rule of Gallo's uh, rule? She's long dead by now, Trakanora. You mean the one who run the tournament when she, uh, she had the helmet on the whole time, right? I never knew what happened to her. She was Polish, so I assume she went home after that tournament. We never heard from her again. 
They will be done, my liege. My steward cries out as she he, she leaves my chambers. I get up from the chair and walk out to the balcony. Below I see thousands, all people brought to prosperity under my rule. What do I want them to remember me by? We can choose our nickname. The Generous, the Benevolent, the Elegant. Oh my. We'll go with the Benevolent. We are King Alessandro, the Benevolent of Sardinia e Corsica. A great title for a great king. Let's see if we can actually find a physician now. Our nephew died in battle. That is unfortunate. I mean, they were still law and crimes, but the loss uh, let, got caught. Like, imagine traveling on a road 500,000 years ago. Could have happened like modern day so much safer. Yeah, it was probably much easier to be a criminal back in the day. I knew she'd be dead by now. I just wondered if something came of her. No, she disappeared after that tournament, and we never saw her again, which is a shame. She did inspire our daughter to become a great fighter, though. So our daughter ended up becoming really, like, high prowess because she got inspired by that woman, which was kind of cool. Oh my gosh, we actually finally found a good physician. She did cost 100 gold, but worth it. And she's going to actually treat our gout. Wonderful. I think I found the reason why some days are more rat-free than others. My vassal, Curadora Goffredo, happily declares as he moves aside to reveal a servant holding a very displeased cat. It wriggles in an attempt to free itself with the scratching of arms, the servant meowing in a rather endearing fashion. I think this one successful rat hunter is, in fact, was in the middle of a wrestling match with a fat one when we found it. What say you? Should we adopt this cat? Of course. Cool, we have a cat now. I have a mod called, a uh, free, uh, yeah. <laughs> just darkness. I added a mod where we can move around the court and look around, so. We can see what people are up to. That's a little shady. I don't know what's going on there. I don't like it. Nice. I'm going to use this in role, like, when I make these into, like, properly edited roleplay videos, I can use this to, like, actually, you know, make interesting screenshots and record stuff, which is cool, so. All right, let's hold court. Curadora Grigaru, who has clearly been working himself up about something, greets me. My king, the dogs of Gatilu think that they are better than us. He spews, cracking his haughty jokes at each market day. Curadora Ferdinandu, the vile knave needs to be put in his place, and those damnable fools made to respect Porta Torres, the leading Curadoria of Sardinia. Porto, Toro, uh, Porto Taurus is our original vassal, so we would favor it over anything else for sure. My lord, my friend Judisa Natalia speaks up. I propose a cadastral survey of all the counties you own. Improved knowledge and mapping of your land will certainly increase its prosperity. That's a good idea. We can't afford it. We'll take some debt for it. Marshal Jedek Galu is hanging us, hounding us. We, we could keep order, my lord. Please, we can organize ourselves without all the death. A peasant woman from the Judicadu of Vecchio has the, uh, an area plagued by unrest assures me that control can be restored without undue bloodshed. Worth a try. Into the void, into the void, into the void. My god, can you please click on that like? There must be something there that is, uh, that has the garter sparkle. It is a very sparkly lamp. Like, my god, it's ethereal. It's probably full of fireflies or something. It looks pretty cool, though. Just just sparkles a lot. The sparkle of things we must break for a quest of spark of the spatial items. People who say they would like to live in Victoria, London are either dumb or willing to die. Probably both. Alright, we're in a bit of debt. But we can get money from the Pope. Not only did he crown us, but he also gave us a bunch of money for being holy, so that's pretty cool. We'll use that to repair our crown as well. Well, we have done quite well for ourselves, haven't we? We are illustrious, we are faithful, we have brought our house much glory by building a kingdom. We, we have done a lot in our, in our life, to be honest. We're 60 now. My granddaughter, Adela, has been impressed with one of the household knights for a very long time. After finally meeting in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself. Greatness comes in time, but there is a grasp bit when it does. Patient, generous, or diligent. We'll become stressed, but we want her to be diligent, so we'll, we'll go for that. 
I wouldn't want to live anywhere in the Victorian age. Maybe the U.S. Even that would be pretty horrible, Tasha, to be fair. Just saying. It, it's all pretty shitty. I'm going to upgrade the trade ports. Again, we want maxed out trade ports in all of Corsica and Sardinia because we want to become the trading hub of the Mediterranean. That's what we're going to be doing probably in EU4 as well. It's just probably I'm going to build tall and develop a trade empire. That'll be interesting. We might go with like a trading like a trading kingdom that also is possibly a haven for pirates. Maybe. We'll see. A lot of things we can do with this, to be honest. Victorian Western U.S. Uh, would be fun to live with natives and exploring untouched pure nature and land. That is true. Seeing America before it was colonized and traveling out west when there was no one there besides the, the Indians would have been incredible. The cadastre completed. My friend Judas and Natalia bows briefly before me and explains with a satisfied, satisfied smile. My lord, you might remember that some months ago you invested a large sum of gold into the cadastre of your counties. I have personally supervised the matter and can proudly say that the job is done. Oh, our development just went up a lot in every county. And we got some uh, prestige. That's pretty cool. Yeah, plus making all the money off the oil boom would be incredible. Yeah, the papacy is massive. They're very powerful. That'll be very interesting in EU4. We're, I mean, we're really religious, so we love it. We have no issues with this at all. At 60 years old, having made himself of Sardinia and uh, Corsica, I think Alessandro would be pretty content with things and where he's at. We'll make him zealous, because we're religious. He's zealous, temperate, and impatient, so he, he'd probably just be living at the last of his days, overseeing his holdings. Not doing much more than that. Because he's not an ambitious person, so he, he would probably be resting on his laurels at this point. We're going to go hunting. That's what we're going to do. How many men do they have? Who, who Canadian? You mean uh, the papacy? They have 13,000 men. The noise from the others had faded away with the time. Courtier Adelina and I stalk up to the heart. We were almost within striking distance when Adelina whispers to me. Now that we are finally by ourselves, there is something I have to tell you about Fabrizio, our knight. I am much more concerned with killing the, the, the deer, so I'm going to just ignore her. To unite Corsica, we need to fight Tuscany. They have 5,000 men. We only have 3.4, so we would not win that. You know, I would like to be a factory owner in the Victorian era. Because then I would buy a bunch of houses with my millions and pass the money on to my very fat children. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. 13,000 men can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, not really. They have 20,000 men, actually. So, the HRE is very strong. France has 10,000, England has 7, Poland has 3, Byzantium has 14. The Seljuks have a whopping 46,000 men. As soon as we uh, become get an intrigue-focused king, we are going to try and kill them and cut them down to size. Does anyone notice anything interesting about the eastern lands? Does anyone see anything a, a little bit weird by chance? Anything that kind of just pops out right now on the map? Because I can see it. I don't know if y'all can see it. Uh oh. Hello there. Thank you for the rain, Bill Tuesday. Thank you for that, man. How's it going? What were you streaming, dude? I appreciate the raid, man. It's very nice of you. Mongolia has arrived indeed. The Khan is here. He's a deviant as well. Nice. Brave, just, and cynical. Tengri, of course, of a very large army. Oh boy. They're coming. You might be able to beat Tuscany if you can get their place in Corsica. You can wait for them to land and intercept them, and they will have the recently uh, seed debuff. We also get a defensive bonus as Sardinian, stalwart defenders. So, yes. Hey, how's it going, Moronic Clarity? Bill Tuesday, what, what were you streaming? Let me go. Let me go look. I'll shoot you a follow as well. 
Project Zomboid. Nice. Zomboid. Thank you for the raid, man. I appreciate that. Our cat is killing all the rats in our castle. Wonderful. Maybe you won't need to espionage the Seljuks anymore. Not if Mongolia gets their hands on them, but then we will have to deal with a much bigger problem. Also, we are able to reform the Sardinian culture. We have a lot of prestige. If we can get to 5,000, we can go with something. Does anyone have ideas for what kind of traditions we, we might want to go for for Sardinia? We want something to kind of fit what our roleplay has been and kind of like the culture of Sardinia. But reforming the culture, we'll definitely want to do when we can. So keep a, keep a, keep a thought on that. How many men do the Mongols have? 8,000, I believe. 7,348, to be precise. They will get absolutely stomped by the Seljuks. Economic focus, probably. Yeah, we're playing tall, so that fits. We just have to make sure not to take land of the main Europe, so island boys until U4 is going to be fun. Yeah, I don't... I don't plan on really trying to take any mainlands. We're going to probably go for Majorca at some point. We'll probably go for Malta at some point as well. So. Let's upgrade those barracks again. It'd just be really risky, though. I mean... Plus, they have... No, they don't have any allies, actually. If we had a good ally, we could potentially win that war. Let's see. We have some children we could betroth. Princess uh, Gyanu, we could get her. Oh my god. Ambitious, diligent, and gregarious. I don't suppose. Wow. That's just impressive. We could marry her to the, uh, the king of Leon as well. How big is Leon right now? Not bad size. It gets involved in Iberia, too. We're going to betroth her to the King of Leon, which gives us a very powerful ally as well. Sicily's on the table, plus we do have to remember not to expand that either fight the certain provinces before the Republic of Pirates forms. Gotcha. Put your traditions to benevolence. Put yourselves on the right side of history so people in 850 years can say that you were the greatest. I'm guessing one thing should be something sailing related. I think so, yeah. Like trading or something along those lines. Italian Carthage. Yeah, so, all right. Our really competent daughter, uh, Princess Gianu, is going to be married to King Garcia of Leon, who is one of the Yemena family. We could also help him expand a little bit in Iberia, too, to, to push the Muslims back, because the Muslims are, are doing very, very well in Iberia right now. Which, obviously, as a very zealous, devout Christian, we would not care for at all. We would not like that. And I've been streaming over four hours. Jesus Christ. Could you ally the papacy? No. Nope. Uh, if we get the dipl diplomacy trait that allows you to negotiate uh, alliances, it might be possible. But tough to say. Pirate republics are weird because you need 10% pirate influence at home trade nodes and you can't have any vassals. Really? I've never played with them at all in EU4, so I have no idea. But that does sound really cool. Yeah, 420. Exactly. Do the Muslims control the Balearic Islands? Uh, the Balearic Islands are these, right? Yes, they do. I'm in a meeting with several notables of my realm discussing important business pertaining to managing the domain when I start to feel itchy again. We really have lice really bad, don't we? We're gonna we're gonna keep itching. This is why you should bathe, but medieval people didn't, so it's kind of, you know. Oh my gosh, my granddaughter's becoming ambitious. Adela and I attend a small ceremony today of a local saint, I will admit the Bishop Agostino certainly took his time getting through the scripture. Despite that, Adel Adela uh, remained fully attentive to the morals and teachings and remi remembered to say her lines along with everyone else. Not bad. Not bad. Impressive. Yeah, having life sucks. I've never had them. Thank fucking Jesus. But 
I've seen people with them, and that shit is terrifying. Owning the Sardinia Corsica and the Blerics might be a good thing for this campaign. Would have had enough time to this year part of the kingdom, too. Yep, agreed. Our son has come of age. He is glowing, intelligent, lustful, impatient, and greedy. Nice. Let's find him a wife. A woman of good bearing. She's lovely, but... Oh, perfect. Mayor Andaberta of Eastbrun. She is lustful as well. Arrogant, forgiving, and fecund. They're going to have a fuckload of kids. Perfect. We need more people in our dynasty. My wife... Our wife is allergic to, to animals. But I'm not giving away my cat, so she can go fuck herself. Just saying. We can sleep in separate bed chambers. It's fine. The cat comes before the wife, just saying. Are we allied with Tuscany now? We're allied with Tuscany. Hold on. Did we marry... I don't know how we got married, uh, allied to Tuscany, but we have. I think pirates need 90% of your fleet clap or more to form on top of all the other stuff. I've also never had life, thank God for that. No kidding. Marry, uh, maybe marry him off to a Spanish family? Our daughter already has, so... He's marrying a, a German princess. Or, I think she's a princess. No, she's a mayor. <laughs> We've married our son to a mayor in one of the towns in the HRE. That's hilarious. Also, we have to have at least own the Caribbean, so we're pirates of the Mediterranean, pirates of the Caribbean. True. Yeah, that'll be interesting to roleplay in EU4. I'm definitely looking forward to that. We can all tell Mayor Anna Berta had too much to drink, even before she insisted on showing us how sober she is. God damn it, my son's new wife just puked all over me. Ugh, gross. Fucking Germans. Can't hold their alcohol. They should drink wine like us. Get that... Get that good, sophisticated breeding, you know? Colonial pirates, I guess. I've had lice before, it bloody sucks. You have to change your bed sheets and clothes and have said things cleaned up in case they're lice... Uh, and lice eggs. Ew. Ugh. That's disgusting, man. Yeah, gross. How about you should try Conan RP or Atlas or Arc RP? Eh. I'll look into it, man. I just don't have enough time to stream the stuff I already want to with Paradox Games. And with Vicky 3 about to come out, I don't think I'll have the time for it. I do need to expand into more things RP-wise, but... I just really enjoy Paradox RP too much, man. Let's get an Antiquarian so we can start to make more artifacts. We'll do Adelinda. I did play a lot of Code in Exiles. It is a really fun game. I never did roleplay in it. I just did, like, uh, like fucking around with some friends, but it was a lot of fun. Why would you honor that doxy Adelinda with the court position and not me? My knight, Fabrizio, is livid. Apparently he was uh, been certain that the honor would befall him and no one else. No. No, no, you're good. You're not competent enough for that. Very presumptive of him. We'll upgrade the fields. CK3 RP is really good for RP. Yes, it is, Samurai. Makes the game a lot more personal when it focuses on people. I have a German friend that holds his alcohol perfectly and almost drinks me under the table. Oh, I'm, I am I agree, Scoby. But we're role-playing arrogant uh, Italians, so we have to, you know, look down on all of our cultures. You gotta remember, Sardinian culture is isolationist. We look down upon other cultures. So, gotta remember that. I'll make you a clip that made me join Atlas RP. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and commission something. We're gonna commission uh, some regalia. We, we have nothing to to hold while we hold court, so we need to commission something. Right now, all we have is a really mediocre crown, so we need to start getting some more really good royal artifacts. Not too much to do right now. I really do want to get an intrigue-focused air. We've been doing a lot of stewardship and stuff, which is really fun and it fits our roleplay, but 
I kind of want to have a more a more fun either seduction or murder murder character. Kind of kind of want to shake things up here. My nephew Jedi Gavini accosted me. Well met, Uncle. I've heard tells of your patronage of Hobus, the metalsmith. They say she is forging regalia worthy of a king. Please take this and give it to her. I wouldn't want to miss the chance to aid in the creation of a masterpiece. Gavini smiles warmly, a bag of corn dangling from his hand. Very nice of him, sure. Oh, he's got an edict memory. Nice. Must make solid gold crown with the finest jewels embedded into it. That would be nice. We're certainly becoming wealthy enough for that. The trading kingdom of Sardinia is becoming very wealthy. Lately, my efforts to impress have fallen flat. My friendship with Count Almone is still standing on shaky ground. Adleta still rejects me. It's a mess. What's going on? However, I've got a brilliant idea. I'll have my beneficiary, Habus, add a dedication to the masterpiece she is making. The flattering dedicatee will be deeply touched by my generosity and munificence, and will have no choice but to like me more. Um... Go of Amoni, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're gonna befriend him. Nice. He's the Count of Bastia. Is he independent? No, he's not. He's still under Tuscany. Just steal the HRE crown. It's pretty cool. No, we're gonna try and steal the Pope, Pope's hat at some point. It's tradition in all grand campaigns I do. If anyone has watched my previous ones, which is unlikely because I was a tiny streamer, but I have done grand campaigns before, and the tradition is we have to steal the Pope's hat, so that does need to happen at some point. We'll have to wait till we get a cynical leader. Kingdom of Sardinia and Kingdom of Sweden. Literally any other kingdom. Alright, we need to we need to upgrade our, our court a little bit. We're gonna make our we'll we'll go with decent uh, fashion. We'll go with modest food, we'll go a few servants, and we'll give minor lodgings. We can afford a bit more. We'll get some more servants, and we'll call it a day. We, we, we're going to spend more money on ensuring our court is actually, you know, got a lot of prestige to it. It's important for a king to do so. Yes, it is. Absolutely, Scoby. We will try and do it at some point. You can actually steal it in the game, by the way. When I did my first uh, when I did my first playthrough Grand Campaign in CK3, it was before Royal Court, so I just role played that we we kidnapped the Pope in that game, and I role played that we stole the Pope's hat, and then I wore it. In this game, we're gonna actually try and steal his hat. So, yeah, that will happen at some point. Adela seems to enjoy our latest feast immensely. Of all the things, she could not stop talking about the rich clothes and glittering gold she saw there. Greedy. <laughs> not a bad thing, I guess. Could be worse. We're pretty old. We're 63. And we're still in really good health, too. Even though we have gout. Damn. I arrived at the Cesare to pay homage to you, glorious king, as a show of my loyalty. Good man. Good man. We will keep upgrading our holdings. Alessandra has come of age. She is our, I think, third son. He is an astute intellectual. Just paranoid and greedy. Not great. Let's find him a good wife. Brunacinda Barcelona would be solid. We'll marry him to her. He got married and immediately put on a helmet. Hmm. Interesting. All right, our daughter is going to marry to uh, King Garcia. He does not deserve her. He is content, diligent, gluttonous, and a drunk. She is ambitious, diligent, gregarious, and quick. He is really, he is really marrying up, to be honest. But we'll still do it. We'll pay for our son's wedding. It's tradition of our family. Man, it is because he is named Alexandria. Anyone with that name does great things. That's true. The joys is something I want to do in real life that can only be done in a game without my head being divorced from my body. That helmet is to block the punches she throws in the arguments after they have sex. That that checks out. That does check out. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Yeah, we're befriending the Duchess of Barcelona. Wonderful. 
So we have, we have now an alliance with Ramon Berenguer the third, who is delicate and a poet. We're a poet too, nice. Hey, we can we can have some poetry sessions together. Fornicator of lovers pox. Oh no. Habu's exper exasperated cry spoil a quiet moment. How am I to go about forging regalia when my mole keeps going missing? She rushes over to me. My lord, every time I make a bit of progress, it seems something goes wrong. I'm certain someone at court is tampering with my work. The metal smith huffs in frustration and storms off back to her, sh uh, her shop. Our wife is fucking with our regalia being made. Well, we figured it out. After supper, I lay in wake near Habos' rooms with a handful of guards watching the passage of the castle grow darker. Just as I consider giving up, a trembling light dances down the corridor, followed by a cloaked silhouette. The dark figure pushes open the door to the shop and futively checks the corridor once more, her face illuminated by the flickering oil burner. Queen Theodosia, our wife is trying to damage our regalia. We're temperate, zealous, and impatient, so we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll put this under the rug. We don't want anyone to know that our wife has been fucking with things. Princess Gyanu is a Gaiga Chadep. She's like too good for King Garcia. She really is. Like, our daughter is an absolute beast. She is absolutely fantastic. He is not. He is very mediocre. She, I assume, will just basically be in charge of Leon from here on out. While he just, like, eats himself into an early grave. I feel like that was a lot of history. Very competent women married to absolute fucking pigs. Over here, my lord. My bitter fishery Habus weighs me over with a wide grin. I have toiled many days and nights, and finally my work is done. She presents me with an object wrath and cloth. As I lift my fabric, my, I, my eyes grow wide. An ornate regalia set of fine craftsmanship is considered a Latin scepter set with pieces of agate, a linen cloak that has been embroidered with silk thread and a Latin cross bearing the orb. It's alright. Not very impressive, but it's alright. It's fine. Literally. It's literally just fine. Cool. The Caliph has a fantastic mantle. Makes sense that stealing it as a Christian won't let you get any of its bonuses. What program do you use to make the medieval-looking papers in the Nile chat? San, it's a it's a it's a transparent background uh, letter document that I edit with Photoshop with like words and stuff like that. If you would like, I can send it to you. Also, your wife is definitely fucking with things instead of just fucking you. She doesn't seem good. No, she's really not. But we're religious. We're very zealous, so we will not like you know murder her, and we're not gonna try and you know divorce her. So we're stuck with her. We're gonna hold a great feast. We're getting old. We won't have any more. So, let's enjoy things. I barely managed to sit down at my seat when I hear a howl emanating from Curadora Grigoriu. It would seem he and his Curadora Ferdinandu have really got into it, as Grigoriu is receiving a problem manhandling from Ferdinandu. Uh, too late, I realize their martial dance has paved its way straight through the dynasty banner. Oh, fuck you. I motioned for my guards to separate the two, hissing and clawing at each other. The duo is presented in front of me, all while throwing blame on one another for starting a fight. God damn it. We're zealous, so we're going to turn the other cheek. He's got a bunch of money from the Pope. Let's go reinvest that. We'll upgrade the, the keep in Galaru. We need to make sure that we are a defensive bastion in case the Muslims ever decide to raid us again. Greetings, my amicable king, Agassinus is quietly considering. I am very interested in the upbringing of your daughter, Elena. You see, I speak Italian vulgar, a language that I believe would be most useful for her to learn, he explained with a genuine tone. I just need a coin for quills, ink, parchment, and some personal compensation, of course. Yeah, sure, why not? There you go. He's gonna, take it, he's gonna teach our daughter Italian. And she can make all the, the spigot. She runs the nation while her husband kills himself and plunders, pleasures himself of other women. It does seem that way, doesn't it? 
He's just eating and drinking his way to, to death while she runs things. Their banner, not the Taurus banner. The only one destroyed their own family banner. Ah, okay, then we're fine then. I wonder how long it will get for us to get world ports into U4. Very quickly, I think, honestly. Probably not too long. All right, let's get our gout treated again. Good work as always. Now that we've dealt with that, we can go ahead and hold court. I recognize the next, next set of petitionals immediately. They are Curadore Gregario of Portas Torres and Curadore Fernan, Fernandu of Gatelli. A pair that are well known for their intense rivalry. Accordingly, they are not arguing with each other. My lord, against Curadore Gregorio of Porta Torres. We have to tell you that the non-adherence of your wife to Sardinian customs has greatly angered many in your realm. We cannot have a heathen Greek married to our ruler. We're going to try and convince them to fuck off. And we succeeded. Good. As soon as it, says, it is his turn to speak, the agitated man, man in front of me screams, The end is nigh! The signs are clear and everywhere. Violence, corruption, vices. The faithfuls have forgotten God. The day of judgment is upon us. There is only one way for us to be saved. Purify your heart by purifying your body. Salvation can't be reached with a heavy belly. Repent now for the day is nigh. We're super fucking religious, so... Fuck. I guess we're gonna stop eating. The next petitioner is an extremely angry Judisa Natalia of Tertoli. With the briefest of the furs shown, Judisa Natalia relays that some of my knights led by Alessandro have passed through Ju the Judicatu of Tortelli recently. They have looted, pillaged, and despoiled the villages and forms of Tortoli. It is an absolute travesty, my king, and I will not stand for it, declares Judisa Natalia. What shall I do? She's our friend, and we really like her, and she's actually kind of strong, so... We're going to give her compensation. It's expensive, and a pain in the ass, but it's fun. What's your character about? What's up, Mr. Meow? He is basically just a very religious, very powerful leader. He has united Sardinia diplomatically. He conquered Corsica, and he founded the Kingdom of Sardinia. He also fought in the Last Crusade uh, with his father in Jerusalem when his family formed the, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, which is of our dynasty. So, he's a very religious man and a very famous and prominent one. Probably the most famous Sardinian in history, to be honest. So, his whole thing is being religious and uh, building an absolutely very strong Sardinia. We've been called to war by Barcelona. We will, of course, come to their aid. Finally, a chance to show our love of God in combat against the heathen in Iberia. No. Jerusalem lost most of the territory they conquered. They're in bad shape. We're going to make our son give us money. As you do. Can we make the other empires in Stellaris once you get there? I have an idea for the Turtle Boys. Yeah, if, if other people would like to make the other empires in Stellaris, I'm happy for it, to be, honestly. I'd be up for it. We can even do a multiplayer Stellaris if y'all want. All right, Alessandro came of age. He is zealous, forgiving, fickle, and a thrifty clerk. Frankly, very incompetent, if we're, if we're being honest. Pretty fucking incompetent. Our cat has caused a problem. Not my problem. Oh, man. Toledo is in the war. The heathens have great armies at their disposal. What they lack is the Lord's grace with them. We're going to personally hire the Knights Templar. Once the Knights Templar have arrived, we're going to combine our army and we are going to destroy the army of the Taifa of Balencia as well as the Emir of Toledo. This is a chance for our dynasty to grant glory through combat against the heathens. We cannot let this pass. A great host underneath my brother. We will fight him in the mountains. It matters not where we fight him, for the Lord is behind us. Forward for a Christianum! Push them out of the mountains and back into the heathen lands to the west. 
A great victory. No surprise. Wow, we got a lot of prestige from that. Holy crap. I want to try and hunt down their army and slaughter them if we can here. Toledo is uh, Muslim. They are very Muslim. I'm going to chase down this army. I don't care the cost. Oh, the war is over. Damn. All right, we successfully helped the Barcelonians push back the Muslims. Uh, we managed to slaughter the army of Toledo and Balencia in the mountains of Barcelona. A glorious war where our family was brought even more honor, prestige, than before. And now we also have the prestige to reform the Sardinian culture. So, we need to figure out what we want to do for that. If they're Muslim, that makes me think two things. One, Muslim Iberia is quite powerful. Yes, it is. They should be called Teletula, because that is the Arabic name for Toledo. Yes, it is. I'm using a mod that I think changed that. I'm not too sure. I don't play Stellaris much and haven't played since the release of Neckwords, but I don't really want to play it, but I have a good Empire idea. Nice. Yep, I saw your message. What the? That would be really cool for roleplay, man. All right. We need something trade-related, I think. We can get Republican Legacy. Oh, you're an empty playtester now. Nice, what the? Oh, yeah. Maritime mer Merkelism. Let's, let's take a look. Yes, we can. That would be absolutely perfect. I fully agree with you, so we'll go for that. Given that we are basically becoming a trading kingdom, we've upgraded all of our ports and we're the biggest, probably one of the most wealthy trading hubs in all of Mediterranean, we will be able to establish maritime mercantilism in eight years. So, yes, fully agreed. Valencia is called uh, Balencia, so I don't see why it's not the same for Toledo. Yeah, I'm also really weirded out by that. In vanilla, it's called Teatula, and it's the Dunid Dynasty, so that is Teatula. Very odd. I'm not too sure why. I've got so many mods on, one of them must change it. Let's find a good life for our, our youngest son. Katrina of Croatia would be lovely. She apparently has very good uh, breeding, so we'll, we'll betroth them. Spain can't form if we let the Muslims rule Iberia. We must give Iberia to the Aragonese, but we get the ones that typically start out from EU4 because strong pirate boys need to form. Too bad you can't play mechanics in CK3 yet, even though so many of these cultural traditions work really well for merchants like maritime mercantilism. I hope they add a trading system to CK3. I don't think they will, but it'd be really cool. Adelak became an astute intellectual. She's ambitious, diligent, and greedy. Let's find her a good husband. Let's find someone with claims and let's enforce the claims and try and get one of our dynasty onto a, onto the throne. He has claims on Holstein, Savoy, Burgundy. If we marry him to our daughter with a matrilineal marriage, we can get our, our family put onto the throne there. So we're going to go for that. I saw it, and I already acknowledged it. What I heard you. I heard you are a playtester. One thing I really hope is that they make a half-decent trade system in Hoy that they're not going to do that. I've wanted that forever. It'd make it so they stop glorifying, like, fascists and communists, too, because we'll make democracies viable, but they're not going to do it. I love the idea of conquering places for trade items. That's what makes the Empire Total War so good. I love playing trade empires. Yep. They could do a lot with that with CK3. I think what I hope is that they're planning a massive DLC for republics and merchant uh, empires, and when they add that DLC, they're going to add trade mechanics. That's what I'm hoping for. 
I'm hoping they're holding off on trade mechanics until we actually get a proper uh, Republic DLC. Fingers crossed. Riding through the hills, I am gaining on the powerful boar I've been chasing for hours. Just as I prepare to strike, I hear my nephew, Jedi Gavini, cry out in pain. He has fallen and is now clutching his leg. <sighs> God damn it. We'll, we'll, we'll help him out. We'll help him out. We are malnourished. That can't be good for our health. Yes, it has become poor. I suspect we are not long for this world. Take your fucking helmet off, kid. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alessandro came out pretty good. EU4 would be really good if they had a system that made you import the stuff that gets various boosts to happiness to the nation. Like if you don't have silk or paper, you can import it and your people can bo get boosts and mood from it. That sounds like civilization, Scoby. Sounds kind of interesting. I wouldn't be opposed to it, personally. While traveling across the plains of the Judicadu of Vecchio, I make a makeshift looking stall by the side of the track. As I stop to take a look, the peasant by the name of Adelasia jumps into action, trying to convince me to buy one of the small cross of carvings she has on sale. I make them by hand, my lord. Each one takes me hours of work. Yeah, we'll buy one. Why not? Get the money for it. Promoting small business. That's always good. We're pretty fucking old. Goddamn. We've been, old. We've been alive for a long time. 67. Our health is starting to fail, though. Legit thought you just fell asleep. Me? No, I was, I was texting someone. Can't even get all of Corsica. Well, Tuscany does have an army of 8,000 men, so probably not a good idea. 140. Wow. I've The oldest I've gotten, I think, is like early 90s. I did get a character to early 90s, I believe. So... I gotta respond to something. Did one of your Greek leaders in the first attempt get to like 97? Yeah, one of them one of them actually lived to be pretty old, didn't they? I don't think it was late nineties though. I thought it was late eighties. I think. I might be wrong, though. Let's work on getting some weight. If we get the money for it, we'll go on one last pilgrimage, too. Because we are zealous, so we'd, we'd want to go visit the holy sites one more time. Oh, no. Jerusalem's fallen. Jerusalem has fallen back to the heathen. The kingdom of Jerusalem is gone. We'll need another crusade for it. We'll use this money to commission. And we died. King Alessandro of Sardinia, a Corsica soul, has finally been cast to hell at 68 years of age. What are you talking about? We were a very religious man. He died gout ridden. A zealous man, he fought for the glory of God against the heathens in one of the greatest holy wars in recent history. King Simeon ascends to the throne, a greedy man. He is unlikely to garner the favor from the peasantry of the realm. He is greedy, just, temperate, flagellant, and a thrifty clerk. And on that note, we are going to end for today. Let's go find someone to raid. Do I know anyone streaming right now? Um, not anyone who's playing CK3, that's for sure. Let me go, let me go. We'll find a good Twitch, uh, someone playing CK3 to raid. Lou is streaming CK2. And I will raid him 
But I raid Lou a lot, and I want to see if there's a good CK3 streamer. If there's not any interesting CK3 streamers, we'll, we'll raid Lou. There might not be, though. None of these look very good, so we're going to go raid Lou. Lou is playing CK2, a fantastic game. I don't want to support this bullshit, though, because Lou knows CK3 is good and he refuses to play it because he's stubborn, and, and I, don't, I don't approve of that bullshit, so. But we will raid him, because he's, he's a great guy, he's a good streamer, and I'm not too sure what he's, he's playing, but we're going to go raid him. If you want to see some entertaining Crusader Kings 2, Creamy Lou is fantastic, he's really entertaining. One of the few streamers I actually watch, to be honest, so. Oh, he's playing the Game of Thrones mod, nice. We're going to go raid him, we'll go say hi. Um, I am streaming tomorrow. If you want to watch some more Crusader Kings roleplay, I'm going to be in a multiplayer game we're hosting in the Discord tomorrow. It's set around the Nile in 1066. I'll be roleplaying Yorgos III of Mercuria, who is obviously the, the holdout Orthodox Christians in the Southern Nile. So that starts tomorrow. Uh, Sunday I won't be streaming, and I won't be back streaming probably until next Tuesday. So we got some CK3 tomorrow, and then I will not be back until next week. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to watch more of the Grand Campaign, it is on Fridays at 1215 EST. So, alright, I will catch you all soon. Hope you enjoyed.